Right, so if I unmute myself, does that work? Yeah. Yeah. Hi there, Michael. Uh, can you hear me, Tom? Guys, hear me on the Zoom? Yes, I can hear you on the Zoom, Kevin. Hi, good morning, everyone. 
Um, I'd like to thank you for joining us today for uh, this forum on astronomy in Africa. Um, we'll just be starting in, in a minute. Just waiting for some of our speakers to come online. Thanks. Uh, um, good morning, everyone. So welcome to the Forum on Astronomy in Africa. Um, so um, this is uh, the second one we've had um, we uh, since last year. So the first one was in 2021, and this is the 2022 meeting. And it's sort of a platform where we sort of also reflect and, and, and have a look at uh, how far we are on 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 this journey uh, towards the GA um, that's going to be taking place in Africa for the first time in 2024. Um, so overall, this is the 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 first GA that's going to be on the African continent, and it's a moment for us to really be be proud of, but also a moment that we sort of look at where we want um, astronomy uh, to be in 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 2024 when 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 the world descended on on african shores um so i think that our first speaker for today is just going to give us some welcoming remarks is takaladine morgani who's the chief director for astronomy um at the department of science and innovation um so takalani when you're ready uh, you, you can speak Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Can you hear me, Charles? Yes, I can hear you, TK. All right. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah, thank you um, to the organizers of this uh, Africa uh, Forum uh, in Astronomy. Uh, and let me uh, take this opportunity. Uh, to open this meeting and also to welcome all of you uh, to this year's event. I think time flies very quickly. It was, uh, I mean, almost a year ago when uh, this, the first meeting of this nature took place. And it just shows us that uh, perhaps the General Assembly in 2024 is not very far, um, you know, because 
um, uh, times goes very fast and therefore uh, we have to continue uh, to work hard to be prepared for the event. Um, let me also uh, acknowledge uh, the presence of the IAU President uh, Deborah ML Green and also uh, Clifford Normani from the NRF, uh, as well as our colleagues from the OAD and the AFAS, uh, including the AFAS uh, uh, president. Um, I had the privilege and honor uh, to accept the IAU flag uh, in Busan. Uh, at the recent IAU General Assembly uh, that took place over there uh, in South Korea. Uh, it was a truly momentous occasion uh, for Africa uh, to have been gi given this baton uh, to run with, you know, as, as part of the global astronomy uh, community. Uh, we had a wonderful time uh, in Busan and we took some lessons, but also at the same time, uh, I want to believe that uh, the African delegation that was there at the meeting uh, was able to display, um, you know, the, the beauty of Africa uh, through the beautiful African attire that we were wearing over there, but also our unique uh, dances that we were performing, uh, which brought fun and, and excitement in Busan. And I hope that we have uh, inspired many people in, who were there to look forward to come to Africa uh, in 2020. 24. Um, astronomy in the continent uh, is growing uh, very fast as you know there are many uh, things and events that are taking place you know all the time. I had the privil privilege recently of opening the centennial celebration of ASA the Astronomical Society of Southern Africa, uh, which reached uh, such a significant milestone. And it was very good to uh, interact uh, with very passionate, you know, amateur astronomers uh, in our country and also in Southern Africa. And it just shows that uh, there is a lot we can do together with amateur astronomy clubs across Africa to tap into their passion of astronomy uh, in, and working together with professional astronomers, um, you know, to uh, build this community. Uh, after this event, I then proceeded to Namibia uh, to attend the 20th anniversary of the HES uh, telescope. Uh, in the southwest of Namibia. And it was also another momentous occasion uh, to see how the gamma ray astronomy community is growing uh, on the back of the HES uh, telescope. And we had very good discussions with the government of Namibia and the leadership of the University of Namibia as to how we can continue to protect the HES uh, site, as well as the Gamsbeck Mountain, you know, for future astronomical um, endeavors in Africa. I also met with the colleagues from the African Millimeter Telescope who were there, uh, who have secured funding to place an AMT uh, telescope at the HES site in Namibia. And that is also the future site that we have identified for the SKA. Uh, so therefore, <clears throat> Africa is blessed with many astronomical sites, 
that we have to preserve uh, in order to continue to attract telescopes uh, from across the world, because we will use such telescopes uh, to bring, uh, to, to build skills and also a pipeline of a new generation of astronomers and engineers uh, that will help us uh, in growing this community. Let me conclude by saying that uh, uh, astronomy is already part of our lives uh, because our calendar is based on the you know, astronomical rotations of the object in our solar system. We all know that a day represents the full rotation of the earth around its own axis. We all know that a month is a full rotation of the moon around the earth. We all know that uh, a, a, a one year is a full rotation of the earth around the sun. And therefore, astronomy is already part of our lives. But we have to continue to make sure that astronomy is even more relevant to human endeavor, to societal um, you know, development, but also to use it as a bridge to connect and to unite people, to use astronomy to inspire people and to see the beauty of our skies and the universe. And therefore, you know, this is what we want to do with uh, 2024 as we move forward uh, to make sure that astronomy uh, is, is truly, <clears throat> you know, uh, something that, uh, you know, we can, we can all participate in. So with those uh, few words, I would like to wish all of you a very productive day as we reflect and as we look forward and even beyond 2024, because our ultimate vision is to position Africa as the next des destination for astronomy, sciences, and facilities. So thank you very much. God bless all of you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Takalani, for those uh, amazing words. Um, yeah, so this J2024, as Takalani mentioned, it's not only really an opportunity for us to showcase Africa as a destination for big astronomy meetings, but also to display Africa and show the world that we also do good science on this continent and that we are we are we are we are we are also on par with 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 with, 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 with where the world is in terms of professional astronomy as well. Um, so the next speaker was uh, Dr. Clifford Lomani, who's the deputy CEO uh, at the at the National Research Foundation, which which is the host of of of, of the GA 2024. Um, I see he is not yet um, with us. So as soon as he joins us, then we will just um, um, have him speak. So now we'll move to the next speaker, who's the president of the International Astronomical Union. Uh, Professor Deborah Malloy Elmagreen. Uh, unfortunately, she could not join us, uh, but she did send through um, her, her, her greetings in the form of a, of a recording. I'm Deborah Elmagreen, President of the International Astronomical Union. I'm delighted to bring greetings to this forum on astronomy in Africa. The IU has a long history with African astronomers, and we are entering an especially exciting period in our collaborations. The IU was originally founded in 1919 to promote the exchange of scientific information among astronomers by hosting annual symposia and triennial general assemblies. I share your joy in having Cape Town host the 32nd IU General Assembly in August 2024, the first time one will be held in Africa. This week's forum is a wonderful opportunity for continued discussions on how all of Africa can be part of and benefit from the General Assembly. The IU has 12,000 members from 85 countries. The rich history of astronomy in South Africa led to its membership in the IU in 1922, shortly after the IU's founding. Other African national members of the IU include Algeria, the Republic of Botswana, Egypt, Ethiopia, Morocco, Nigeria, and most recently, Madagascar and Mozambique. 
These countries include several hundred individual and junior members of the IAU, many of whom have held leadership positions. Solomon Tesma from Ethiopia is one of our vice presidents on the executive committee, and Rene Kwan Korteweg from South Africa served as vice president in the last triennium. Several others have served as officers or on steering committees of our divisions, commissions, and working groups. The IU over the past decades has expanded its mission, which is to promote and safeguard the science of astronomy in all its aspects, including research, communication, education, and development through international cooperation. We have four offices that use astronomy as a tool for the public and students. Their activities are mirrored in the objectives of developing astronomy. We are proud to have the Office of Astronomy for Development headquartered in South Africa and directed by Kevin Govender and Vanessa McBride. The OED is hosted jointly by the IAU, NRF, and DSI and has engaged hundreds of thousands of people in projects that draw on the excitement of astronomy and apply its technologies and techniques through key programs that address UN sustainable development goals in communities. Astronomers use many skills that are transferable to other fields, such as computer programming and statistics, applied to large data sets in climate science, medicine, and finance. The OED efforts in recent years targeting pandemic-related proposals have been especially positive. We are looking forward to an IAU symposium on dark sky and astronomical heritage in boosting astrotourism around the globe in November 2023 in Ethiopia, which ties in with the OED flagship project of Astrostase to support local economic development. The IAU recognizes excellence through prizes and fellowships. Khalid Sayed from Cairo University and the University of Cape Town recently received the Gruber Postdoctoral Fellowship, and Miriam el Yajori from Morocco won the PhD prize from Division H on Interstellar Matter. I'm delighted that the African Astronomical Society and African Network for Women in Astronomy initiated the Women in Astronomy in Africa Awards last year, since these prizes not only honor excellence in astronomy, but encourage future generations. Astronomy inspires curiosity, so our Office of Astronomy for Education uses astronomy as a gateway to STEM fields for school children. Promoting astronomy in school curricula and aiding teacher science development will lead to a generation better able to tackle global science problems. Our national astronomy education coordinators include volunteers in 54 African countries. Our Office for Young Astronomers hosts the International Astrophysics Schools, which provide training in observations and data analysis for graduate students. Africa has hosted several international schools for young astronomers and one in South Africa postponed to the, to the pandemic is being planned for late 2023. We also have a new program of hands-on workshops, which will provide specialized training for early career astronomers in developing countries. South Africa will host a joint IAU Kaspar IHAL workshop on X-ray astronomy in February 2023. In addition, Egypt will host a Middle East and African regional IAU meeting for professional astronomers in February 2023. It is vital that we engage a diverse global community in science, since that will broaden ideas and perspectives. To that end, the Office for Astronomy Outreach has projects in over 100 countries, and Africa alone has national outreach coordinators in 54 countries. OAO efforts include translating astronomy into native languages, encouraging girls in science through astronomy activities with women mentors, and providing school children with telescopes. Our diplomacy efforts bring together children in separated communities in post-conflict regions through their enjoyment of astronomy. We strive for an inclusive community through activities such as Inspiring Stars, which is a traveling international exhibit for the visually impaired that uses tactile models and sound to represent astronomical objects. Another program translates astronomical terms into sign language for the hearing impaired. The Working Group on Global Coordination of Ground and Space Astrophysics draws on our collective expertise in science and technology to tackle coordinated international endeavors. Africa is a leader in global efforts through the SAAO and SKAO and their SALT and Meerkat telescopes. The South African Astronomical Observatory hosted the February 2020 Kavli IAU workshop on transient and multi-messenger astronomy just before the global pandemic shutdown. As fundamental as astronomy is to humanity, 
The field would never have developed without our ability to see the night sky, yet many people have never had a clear view of the Milky Way. Our working group on dark and quiet skies aims to protect our skies from light pollution and radio interference so we can continue to enjoy space and wildlife natural rhythms are not disrupted. Of course, Africa has a long history of working to preserve dark skies, for example, through its International Dark Sky Reserve in Namibia and Dark Sky Sanctuary in Botswana. Both optical and radio observations from the ground are threatened by the enormous number of new communication satellites crossing our skies, reflecting sunlight and transmitting data at radio wavelengths. An IU Center for the Protection of Dark and Quiet Skies from Satellite Constellation Interference, formed in April 2022, is co-hosted by the SKA Observatory and NSF's NOIR Lab. It coordinates countries working together and with the United Nations to help mitigate the impact of satellite constellations. Astronomy is deeply rooted in our histories and cultures, forging bonds across societies. Your forum mirrors the spirit of the IU in bringing people together to collaborate, share their knowledge, and engage in astronomy for its own sake and as a tool for our betterment. Vision 2024, the audacious African astronomy vision, is aligned with the goals of the IU and provides a model for others to emulate in connecting science to the people. I'm greatly looking forward to the IU General Assembly in 2024 and hope to see many of you in Cape Town. I wish you well as you continue to build a vibrant astronomical community throughout Africa. I'd like to thank Deborah for 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 that amazing message, um, and um, I mean it also speaks to just that um, we are not just an island as the African astronomical community, but we've, we've we we are part of this much bigger community of of of, of astronomers, people that share the same the 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 the, the, the same goals that we do um, to take everyone or to take astronomy to, to, to everyone and to make it indeed uh, a field that is um, inclusive. So speaking about Vision 2024, we're now going to move on to our next speaker, um, Dr. Vanessa McGrath, McBride uh, from, from the OED, who's also the co-chair um, with me on this uh, on the National Organizing Committee for the GA 2024. And she's going to be speaking about um, the update or giving us an update on the on, on, on the vision 2024. Vanessa? Thank, Thank you, Charles, and, um, and, and welcome, welcome everybody. everybody. It's really fantastic, fantastic to be here and to get such a um, great uh, introduction um, to Vision 2024 and the IAU um, Assembly from, from Takalani and from Deborah. And I think listening to Deborah's talk, it really just struck me how much activity in astronomy is happening um, on the continent of Africa. So it's really incredibly exciting time for us. I'm going to start this uh, presentation um, with the, the video that we used um, in Busan to invite, uh, to invite the world to Africa in 2024. We grew up under the stars, our shared skies, connected. In my memories, starlight shimmered off still lakes to create endless African night skies. Inspiration came from the teachings of our mothers, fathers, teachers, role models, where our rich cultural heritage was interwoven with a budding scientific understanding. Our astronomy journey had begun. In Africa, we grew. The animals. The people. The infrastructure. Our culture. In school, we learned what it was to be an astronomer. We gathered our knowledge and strove to break new ground. We challenged and learned and built. And our understanding reached new heights 
driving our endless curiosity for the unknown. Today, Africa rises to share our knowledge with the world. We innovate, connect, constantly pushing boundaries. We understand we have one world to live in and strive for a sustainable future for all, inclusive and in touch with our environment. Because Ubuntu, we are all one. We are all Africa. And we welcome you. Huge thanks um, to the team that put that uh, video together. Let me just see if I can get back to my slides. So this is the video that we played in Busan just a few months ago, um, where Takalani mentioned it was an opportunity for Africa to take the IAU flag um, from the current hosts in South Korea, because we'll be hosting the next big meeting and this global gathering of astronomy um, in Cape Town in South Africa in just two short years from now. So this is a, a momentous occasion for us because this is the first time in over 100 years of the existence of the IAU that this meeting will be held in the African continent. And when we put uh, the bid in in uh, early 2018 and we presented the bid uh, in Vienna, it was always put forward as a truly African bid, even though it would be hosted in Cape Town in South Africa. And so throughout the process since the award of this bid, a lot of the work has been in pulling us together as a community of astronomers and amateur astronomers and um, education specialists, outreach coordinators on the continent of Africa so that we can really um, inspire all of us and the world when they visit us in 2024. So just to give you a, a quick overview of where we are on this journey to 2024, you can can see how we progressed from the last Africa Forum, which we held in October last year. Um, we then had a number of um, meetings, including the African Astronomical Society's General Assembly. We've had um, big meetings at the European Astronomical Society meeting, and of course, at the IAU's General Assembly in Busan. And all of these have served as opportunities to rally not only um, ourselves on the continent of Africa, but also to rally the support and collaboration of astronomers um, and enthusiasts across the world. So you can see from here at the second Africa Forum, we now head towards meetings of the American Astronomical Society early next year, another General Assembly of our African Astronomy Society, and of course the EAS meetings that will happen, European Astronomical Society meetings that will happen later in the year. So throughout this whole journey, um, a couple of people who came back and captured that feeling from um, Vienna when we won the bid, put together a first draft of this idea, this audacious vision for astronomy uh, for 2024. And slowly over the last couple of years, the whole community has been working towards um, adding to this vision and really growing it into something that we can leave as a legacy of 2024. And this vision is broader than just a meeting, right? This uh, vision 2024 captures that spirit of what we want to achieve in the lead up to the General Assembly. And of course, beyond that, what we want to be as a legacy um, for the current generation of students, um, student astronomers, and who will be the future of astronomy on this continent. And so the idea of that vision really encompasses lots of different things like the people, it, it includes the experience that astronomers will have when they visit uh, Africa. It looks at how we can uh, change or um, innovate on some of the infrastructure that's needed, both for meetings and for telescopes. It looks at how we can best support each other doing science. And then of course, it looks like at things like um, logistics of the meeting itself, 
but also at how we can use um, GA 2024 to unlock particular opportunities and whether those opportunities are in the research sphere or whether they are opportunities for um, astronomy for development or opportunities within education at school or at university level. All of those are things that are have been ideas that have worked into that vision. So you can see, you can see that vision online. Um, here's a, a nice version of the vision that was launched um, at the AFAS meeting earlier this year in March. It's, a, it's an interactive uh, web version where you can just click on these different squares and see some of the key points in that vision. But of course, this vision is a working document, right? And we want to see um, people engaging with it and adding to it. And you can see this um, working document at, um, on Google Docs. We sent the link around, Charles sent it um, in his email yesterday, so you should have the link there. There's also a QR code here if you want to go directly to that document and add further ideas for brainstorming, or you may see certain um, actions that are required that you'd be willing to embark on as part of this vision. So this is not a vision that's owned by any one of us. It's really a vision that's owned by all of us and that we can all contribute to. So please do take a look at this again and see which bits of it are relevant, which bits may still be missing and that we need to work towards um, as we progress along the road to 2024. And I think this will be especially important because this afternoon in the session at uh, two o'clock, we'll come back to the Google Doc version of this. And hopefully by then people have made some comments on the document and we'll be able to either assimilate those ideas or we'll be able to use this session as a brainstorming session for thinking about how we can achieve some of these actions and goals that we see as part of the vision. So please do add to them throughout the day. So just to give you a flavor of what is on that document, um, in terms of people, how we see the vision is we see this in terms of a strongly networked astronomy community. And in fact, we can already see, you know, this community coming to fruition through meetings like today's meeting at the Africa Forum, but also through the really uh, strong leadership of the African Astronomical Society. What we'd like to see is we'd like to see diverse leadership in the, uh, in the astronomy community. We also want to see um, opportunities for strong career development, both within astronomy, but of course, many people who branch out into industry as well. And we want to see strong development, not only within the academic sphere, but in terms of the support functions that are required by astronomy, like engineers, technicians, those kinds of related systems. We want to see um, some of the new innovative ideas around providing collaborative teaching that both saves uh, time for us, but it is also innovative in its approach. We wanted to see funding for scholarships and we want to see a strong and um, involved amateur community of astronomers on the continent. In terms of infrastructure, some of the things that are highlighted in the vision document is, is good internet connectivity and access to high performance or even cloud computing. Researchers also wanted to see the opportunity of having small telescopes for teaching and research. And we've seen a number of these kinds of projects grow on the continent in the last few years. There's also an idea of using remote observing and how can we best employ that in regions where there's not immediate access to observatories. And of course, thinking about uh, how large numbers of people on the continent have mobile phones, can we use mobile network applications um, to teach astronomy, to do some kind of research or even for outreach. And of course, then looking at the importance of data archiving and doing science of these archival data sets. So in terms of African uh, lead science, there's been a lot of work on this happening in the last year or so. Part of the vision is looking at how our um, science really integrates with the facilities that we have. Can we come up with uh, models for joint student supervision um, across the continent? So, uh, um, so intra-African collaboration and student supervision and how we can use those kinds of models to really embed the research networks on the continent. Part of that is looking at balanced teaching and research loads. 
of course, we're looking at increasing African representation uh, at, in the IAU. Of course, that gives um, us on the continent of Africa a voice in the, de in the decision making structures of the IAU. And of course, we've been working hard on African scientific leadership at GA 2024. And I think that will really come through in the presentation that uh, the science community will give later this morning. In terms of education, development, public outreach, while there's not a category as such in our written document, you can see all of these um, aspects work their way through. There's opportunities for special itineraries around 2024. So for example, people who may travel to Cape Town to attend the GA, but then may head back via Namibia or Ethiopia to participate in a research visit or a teaching collaboration or something like that. Opportunities for engaging the public and raising the, the visibility of not only astronomy, but around scientific thinking and the value of science for society. Of course, there's opportunities around com communication, science communication training, and opportunities for cultural astronomy tourism. And then of course, there are clearly significant development challenges that we can think very creatively about how we can use the General Assembly and what comes out of it in terms of partnerships to address some of those challenges. Then in terms of opportunities, there are many on the horizon. Some of these are centered around the idea of ambassadors of astronomy in Africa. So over the next two years, um, people playing a role in, in uh, promoting not only the GA, but really highlighting uh, the growth of astronomy on the continent. Looking at things like industry partnerships and where we can benefit from those. Research collaborations, of course, various kinds of uh, outreach to schools and also the opportunity that um, hybrid conferencing and the post-COVID world um, provides us. And in terms of legacy, the Vision 2024 document really looks at, um, it would like to see transformation of the astronomy community across the continent from a community that has traditionally been dominated um, by sort of Western, um, you know, and, and white people, into something that is really more representative of our um, population on the continent. We also want to grow a greater unity in astronomy across Africa. You can see those things coming through in the research and the teaching collaborations, maybe through providing astronomy hubs. Part of the legacy is looking at the strength we have in the huge diversity of people on the continent. And then of course, looking at sustainability. So really growing um, astronomy that can be uh, sustainable in terms of the people, but also in terms of um, infrastructure and the impact on the environment. And then, of course, we'd like to promote Africa as a destination for talent uh, and investment. So these are really some fantastic big ideas that have come out of all of the community and have worked their way into that document. So where are we um, on the vision 2024? Well, at the last Africa Forum in 2021, this is the, the, the sort of logo of last year's Africa Forum, there was one major um, revision uh, to, the, to the vision document. So it went into version 3.0. And, and what happened there was really that um, specific actions were identified and then potentially people who could take um, those actions were also identified. And so the outcome of that was that um, about six months later, there was a call for proposals um, to address those action items that were in the Vision 2024. So that call was launched at the African Astronomical Society's annual meeting. That was in March this year, and it closed uh, in, in the middle of April. And out of the proposals that were submitted to that call, 19 were selected for support. Not all of the proposals um, asked for financial support. So in total, about 350,000 Rand was awarded from um, the, the seed funding provided by the Department of Science and Innovation um, for growing the, the African astronomy community ahead of GA 2024. 
And we'll see updates from a number of those projects, or in some cases where projects are just setting out, we'll see outlines of what they plan in the section at uh, 11 o'clock on uh, Vision 2024 project. So I think where we are now is, is where do we go from here? So we've had this big update of Vision 2024. We've also had the um, call for proposals and we have you know, 19 different projects that are taking some of these various actions on 2024. So what is still missing from 2024? That is for all of us to have a look at and to see where we are missing potential um, high level impacts or good opportunities or, or things that we can support in the lead up to 2024. I also would encourage all of us to think about, do we or our institutes have the capacity to lead on any of these specific actions? And if so, can we make a note of this and begin to engage on how to lead those actions? And then you think more broadly of how do we track progress on, on this vision 2024? Of course, we now uh, may come up with vision 4.0 by the end of the day, or, or we may want to think about launching another call for proposals if there's sufficient interest from the community for people to take action on more of these, um, more of these goals for Vision 2024. So please think about these questions as we go through the day and really let's raise those points in this afternoon session where we have a working session on the document and we can put some of these ideas into practice. So thanks very much for your attention, everyone. Um, and thanks very much, Charles, for sharing the session. I'll end there. Let me just mute myself quickly. All right. Thank you so much, Vanessa, for that uh, wonderful update on the on the vision 2024. Um, yeah, and I mean, uh, after the, 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 the meeting last year, there were even some of the emails sent to the various stakeholders that were identified uh, last year by, by the community. And I think um, I've, I've, I've shared the link now um, for that uh, live document for everyone just go and have a look at even, even throughout the day and give your input, even, of course, continue to add the stakeholders that we could contact for for them to, to continue to, to 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 help us really make progress on 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 the vision 2024. Um, and so now our next speaker is uh, Professor Teve Medubi, who is the president of the African Astronomical Society, and is just going to basically be giving us an update on the status of astronomy in 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 Africa, and I think that also sort of paint for us a, a good picture of where we can work towards uh, um, looking at the at, at the vision 2024, and also feed into some of our discussions later. Um, so, Chebe, thanks. Okay. Uh, good morning, colleagues. Uh, thank you, Charles, for for giving me this opportunity. Can I share? Uh, can I share my video? Yes, can you I can share, go ahead, Chebe. Can, can I share yeah. the screen? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Um, are you all able to see the colleagues? Are yes, you we all can. able to see my screen? Yes, we can see it. You can just put on presentation mode to it. Okay. Right, thanks. And can you see that? Is that clear? Okay. Yep. All right. yep, it's clear. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you again, colleagues, for, for this opportunity. Um my presentation is really based on uh, a presentation that was done by Jamal, the previous president of AFAS. And I think it's, it's based on collecting reports from the various uh, colleagues across Africa on the different projects and the different uh, uh, um, facilities that are being developed across Africa. Uh, because uh, astronomy in, in Africa is really honestly dominated by what is happening in South Africa, SKA and the large optical telescopes there. I will not talk about astronomy developments in South Africa. I think uh, many speakers will talk about it in the rest of the, of the, the meeting. So I'll focus on places that uh, uh, there's less talking about, but where really exciting and interesting things are happening. So I don't know why I can't. Okay. All right. So, um, so as I said, credit goes to Jamal for providing these slides, for letting me use the slides. 
and also uh, I'd like to thank Charles for always assisting me with many things, you know, regarding this. And uh, some of these reports are, have also been published and the publications are listed there towards the, the bottom of this, this slide that I'm showing you now. Okay, so there is a map of Africa on your right in that slide. It shows you the different prominent observatories across the continent. Uh, there's a large concentration, of course, in the south, largely in South Africa with the optical and radio telescopes, and in Namibia with HES. And then there are uh, other thing, other observatories, I mean, uh, in different parts of Africa, as I said. I mean, for example, in Ethiopia, there's a total observatory, and there's a various other telescopes that I'll be talking about today and facilities. And of course, I couldn't end my presentation without talking about the AVN, which is really an exciting collaboration between uh, Africa and the rest of the world uh, in terms of uh, long baseline line, uh, radio interferometry. And when you look at the picture, of course, I mean, it's very clear that uh, one of the strengths of Africa uh, in astronomy research could be in multi-wavelength or and or multi-messenger astronomy as well, because there are really uh, interesting developments taking place. Okay. But before I continue, let me talk a little bit about the society that I represent. I'm currently the president of Af African Astronomical Society. It's an organization of professional and amateur astronomers and, and people who are just uh, interested uh, in developing astronomy in Africa. It was founded in 2011 and relaunched in 2019. Uh, our vision is to create a globally competitive and collaborative astronomy community in Africa. And our mission is to be the voice of astronomy in Africa and to contribute to addressing the challenges faced by Africa through promotion and advancement of astronomy. Uh, we are governed by a constitution and uh, we, we are a registered NPO uh, with those registration details. And the secretary of, of AFAS is based, is based currently based in South Africa and is funded by the Department of Science and Innovation. Uh, uh, and our office is at the South African Astronomical Observatory in Cape Town. Uh, the key objectives of AFAS are to cultivate and support collaborative astronomy activities in Africa and internationally, encourage the appreciation of the significance of astronomy in Africa, serve as an interface between African Union and astronomy related activities, encourage governmental and intergovernmental investments in astronomy in Africa, encourage the use of astronomy for socioeconomic development, and there are many examples of that, uh, especially in the last three years of COVID, uh, really there have been really amazing initiatives by, by astronomers and astronomy, friends of astronomy, astronomy in, in Africa in, in assisting some of communities in, in, in Africa uh, deal with, with COVID issues. Um, so I also use astronomy to attract African youth to science and technology, engineering and mathematics careers. As you know that one of the major challenges in Africa is, is developing uh, and training uh, technologists and scientists in order for Africa to deal with, with the matters of economy and, and things like that. AFAS also assists in organizing meetings and events pertaining to astronomy and related fields and also we help in safeguarding or contribute, or we'll try to contribute in safeguarding astronomical sites and indigenous knowledge of Africa. Now I'll go through the different regions. I will not be able to cover everything. I have too many slides here. So some of them I'll just uh, go over very quickly or uh, go over. So let's start with Ethiopia. Uh, the, the main observatory in Ethiopia is the Entoto Observatory. They have two astronomical telescopes, one meter each. And the good news is that they are both operational, although they are not yet accessible because of construction that is taking place currently at the site. But I mean, uh, images and data has been collected with them. And in my slide on the top right, 
you see a first light image of Whirlpool Galaxy uh, taken by this, one of these telescopes. And the research focuses are planetary astronomy, stellar astronomy and astrophysics, galactic and interstellar and medium astronomy, extragalactic astronomy and cosmology, and space and astronomical instrumentation. They also have a, a team of, of students and researchers. Uh, the astronomy side of Intoto has three PhD astronomers, uh, contains of, of 14 members has three. Oh, sorry, this is the students, the number of students. They have three PhD students, five masters, and six BSc uh, students. And you can see some of them in, those, in the pictures that we have there. And uh, yeah. Uh, the research summary, the main three research focus is extragalactic astronomy, stellar astronomy, and also cultural astronomy, especially pertaining to Ethiopia. And um, there are pictures of one of the telescopes on the right, on the left. And in fact, the picture of the, the domes, the two domes, uh, you can see there on the right. Um, I will skip that about the plane astronomical astronomical observations. Then the yeah the postgraduate uh, program is listed there. It's a repeat of what I was saying earlier. And then I list uh, the institutions that are involved uh, in Intoto. There's Intoto Observatory itself. There's Addis, Addis Ababa University, Bahadar University, Mekele University, and Jima University. All of them in Ethiopia. Now let's move to, we're still in East Africa, to Uganda. Uh, Uganda is very exciting. And I can say that because recently I visited uh, Uganda to attend the summer school they organized by the community there, especially Mbarara University of Science and Technology. They have a good number of postgraduate students who participated in the school. So really, it's really quite exciting. Uh, uh, I, I expect a lot of great development in the coming years, uh, but they have uh, they have um, they focusing on astrophysics courses. Um, structure and evolution, extragalactic astronomy, computational astrophysics. Um, yeah, it seems like we've lost Tebe. Um, so we'll just try to 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 check with him and 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 ask him to to reconnect, or maybe it could be load shedding uh, where where he is. So we'll just check with him quickly. All right, so Terry is is reconnecting. Um, he said he just he just lost um, his connection. Uh, apologies for that.
Right. Um, maybe we can use this opportunity for anyone that has any questions for any one of our previous speakers or anyone that would just like to make any comments um, or to, to anything that, that 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 has been said so far. So the floor is open until until Terry can 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 read you and continue with his presentation. Okay, so Tebe is rejoining. Yeah. All right, Tebe, can you can you hear us? May I ask about uh, some announcement about like the Mayaram twenty four the twenty three? Yeah, yeah we, we 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 will make that uh, that, that announcement when we do. Uh, that was the end of the session. Thanks. Okay. All right, Terry, you you can continue. Thanks. All right, so you can just unmute. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. I apologize for that, really. So. Uh, I got kicked out for some reason. So now we will move to uh, astronomy in Egypt. Uh, there is a Kotamiya Astronomical Observatory, and it has various departments to it. There's astronomy, solar and research, solar and space research, uh, seismology, geomagnetism, and geodynamics. Uh, their main instrument there is a 74 inch telescope. There's other smaller telescopes like the 30 inch one that is there. So the main focus in terms of instrumentation is optical. And uh, yeah, so it's, it has, they've been having this telescope for a long time and they, have, they use it for training and for research as well. Um, and they focus on photometry, variable star astronomy, studies of massive stars, and also cosmology. Um, and then uh, now I'll move to Algeria, where they also have uh, quite a number, of, a number of optical telescopes, some of them dating back in the 1890s, and they have participated in uh, important uh, work. And there are pictures of the, the 50 centimeter telescope on the left and the 32 centimeter telescope on the right. And this is the new 80 centimeter telescope, uh, which is quite exciting. Uh, they have at the observatory, they have about 25 researchers um, and into two divisions. There's a solar physics division and there's a stellar and high energy astrophysics division. There are also 25 researchers in universities throughout Algeria, mainly in theoretical astrophysics. Okay, the main field of studies is solar physics, as I said, helioseismology, gamma ray bursts, cosmic rays, binary stars, and compact object. And uh, a very, very exciting project that they're having right now is the construction of the Orias National Observatory. Uh, it is brand new. In fact, they've been doing site testing uh, uh, for the, you know, to see how good the site is for when they start installing the telescopes that they want to put in there. The telescopes will cons contain, consist of 12 to 16 small telescopes or so fast telescopes, all with wide, uh, um, wide field of view. And the idea of having this telescope is to look at uh, multi-messengers uh, uh, astronomy, as well as looking at uh, transients. 
Uh, this is a picture of currently uh, where they are. They have a, a seeing monitor on that dome up there in the white dome. And uh, I think soon they'll be doing their installations um, there. So more pictures of the, of the observatory. And uh, according to reports, this is a, a reasonably good site for astronomy, for optical astronomy. They also have a radio astronomy project uh, where they're trying to convert uh, uh, several dishes, uh, communication dishes that are available in Northern Algeria into radio dishes. This is good development for radio astronomy in, in Algeria. And those are just pictures of them. And these are some of the, the dishes uh, that are there. And then there's also other projects like the, the GEM ESO project, uh, where they do GRB, uh, look at study GRB external shocks, compact stars measuring and, and, and doing simulations. Okay. And I'm just going, sorry. I mean, these are image, some of the simulations of measuring of compact stars. Also, Algeria has been granted an observer status within that KM3 net collaboration. And this is a collaboration of uh, neutron uh, uh, telescopes that are uh, uh, that are under. I mean, will be located in the Mediterranean Sea, and so this is really quite a uh, Algeria getting involved in the cutting edge uh, astronomy research. Okay, and then moving to Morocco. Uh, this uh, Okamedan Observatory, uh, also largely an, uh, an optical observatory. And there are several telescopes, the several domes that are there. And uh, some of them have been involved in nice and uh, good international research project like the Trappist project, uh, the OWL project, which is a Korean uh, network of small telescopes across the world. And so on, and also the most telescopes uh, which they're involved in. So largely small telescopes, really. Uh, the two research groups are the high energy and the astrophysics, and they have 21 senior researchers and 12, which is made out of 12 uh, faculty members and nine associates, and of course graduate students and so on. Uh, a little bit more about that KMN3 net telescope that I was talking about. Uh, also, uh, Morocco is involved in, in that. Um, as I explained, it's a large network of next generation underwater neutrino telescopes in the Mediterranean Sea. Okay. And then uh, in West Africa, because of time, uh, there are facilities in, uh, in Nigeria. There's a 25 centimeter mid reflector, 10 centimeter solar telescope. Uh, a six meter radio telescope and so on. And there's also a Ghana 32 meter radio telescope which has been refurbished or was converted. Um, and I think there's good progress on that. And then, uh, and then Burkina Faso, they also has, uh, is a one meter telescope that is being installed. Uh, I think it was, it was relocated from elsewhere to Burkina Faso recently. And um, yeah, and then the, there's also training taking place. And there uh, is a slide about the Ghana 32 meter radio telescope. And that is how it looks like. And I think the work is almost complete, I think, from what my understanding. And uh, this is exciting because it can be used in collaboration with other radio telescopes across, across Africa and in, a, in other parts of the world. I'm going to jump to the relocation of the Mali telescope in. Marley Telescope in uh, Burkina Faso. The telescope originally came from La Silla Observatory and uh, things are almost, uh, I think, ready as well. And so they're developing, they've also developed a teaching program for training students in astronomy, in galactic astronomy, extragalactic astronomy, stellar evolution, instrumentation, stellar atmospheres. So really quite exciting developments. Um, Countries that I have not talked about, of course, Botswana with the radio dishes that were there, the be used Botswana International University of Science and Technology, and of course uh, Namibia with a long tradition 
of, of high energy astrophysics there. In fact, recently they celebrated 20 years of, of, of HES. So uh, many exciting projects really. And then of course the African VLBI network, um, which is also ca currently under development. And as I mentioned, the, the fact that the Ghana dish is getting ready means that uh, we will soon involve many more African, several more African countries in the African AVN. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so in summary, really, there's a, there are a lot of aspects of astronomy that are taking place right across the continent. The research is strengthening. Um, and there's also observatories, some of them being built up, as I indicated, in North Africa. And even uh, the, the exciting news that the Ethiopian telescopes are now operating. And then also several outreach programs, in particular different schools. There was a school recently in Zambia, in Uganda, and AFAS would like to uh, form partnership with the different schools. And even we are looking into possibilities of establishing our own AFAS uh, continent-wide schools uh, to assist with the training and uh, uh, human development uh, projects. Uh, with those words, I'd like to end my presentation. And I apologize for uh, you know, having a break in my presentation due to technical issues. Thank you very much. Um, thank you so much, Tebe, for the presentation. I think it really does give us a good summary of, of all the activities that are taking place on, on, on the African continent. And it's really things that we really should be excited about uh, going into the future, and also going into 2024. So we will just take the questions to at the, at the end of this session, Tebe. We just have two more presentations. And if there are any, so if you can just stay towards the end, if there are any questions for your presentation. Um, and now we'll be speak. We'll, we'll, we'll now move over to Sally, uh, who's a member of our NOC and also involved in the outreach committee um, um, for and uh, under the the GA NOC. And she's going to be speaking about reflection on Busan. So Sally, take it away. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Charles. I'm just going to share my screen quickly. Uh, if you could stop sharing, please, David. Oh. Uh, okay, let me try. Um, Sorry saying. to kick you off. <laughs> no, 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 no problem. Sorry. <laughs> All right, Sally, should we be able to share? Yes, that? I'll do so. Hope it works. Okay, uh, is it all good, Charles? You can see yep, my... you can see it. Yep. Okay, great. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Charles and Vanessa and everyone there for um, their great talk so far. Um, so I'm just going to give you a bit of a, a glimpse into our time in Busan, uh, some reflections on uh, how the uh, International Astron Astronomical Union uh, General Assembly went down in uh, 2022 in August. So first things first, uh, I was uh, with a group of a wonderful group of uh, a delegation from South Africa, but we formed eventually formed part of a much larger delegation from Africa. We uh, missioned from Cape Town all the way to uh, South Korea, and you can see it located there. Now, we landed in Seoul to lots of uh, COVID restrictions and such. So we were, um, COVID restrictions were quite uh, were still strict at that time. So we had to wear uh, masks and make sure we had all our tests. And unfortunately, uh, this caused a lot of uh, trouble for a lot of other delegates in the world who weren't able to, who weren't able to pass their COVID tests or had to turn back very unfortunately. But we, uh, a group of us managed to land in Seoul and uh, missioned across, took a high-speed train across to Busan. And uh, I can tell you it was very, very warm for the two weeks we were there. Uh, very humid, but uh, so quite a shock to the system for some of us, but uh, was, uh, we were very fortunate to have uh, sunny weather at least. So the 
IU uh, G8 took place over two weeks, uh, from August the 2nd to August uh, the 11th. And that's from Tuesday to Thursday. And uh, took place in Busan in uh, the Bexco building. And uh, this was the 31st General Assembly. So just a bit more about the venue. And uh, I've got a picture of the sun, just a little picture there, but that gives you a bit of an idea of uh, some of the beauty of the sun itself. Uh, it consists of these beautiful rolling hills with uh, wonderful cities that are set inside these valleys. And uh, lots and lots of people um, also set on, it's a harbor, a harbor city, so uh, lots of beaches. And uh, but as you can see, lots of uh, greenery, so something for everything went one to do. This was actually taken on one of the historical tours that they uh, that they provided for us. And you can just see just a little bit in the, the left hand corner there. There's the uh, one of one of their astronomical uh, historical sites. And uh, I found it fascinating. The uh, one of the themes or one of the 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 knowledge, what knowledge they shared with us was that uh, Korean history is uh, spans almost as long as it's astronomy history. And this is over 2000 years uh, long. So it's, it's a wonderful astronomical heritage that they've got. Of course, it's not only during the day, they also have um, lots of happenings at night. And there's just some of the pictures from the street markets that we explored. Um, the conference itself took place at the Expo Center shown there, which was a, a wonderful center. And uh, we, what I've also got there is, uh, you'll see in the next slide or in the next image, uh, they were incredibly welcoming to astronomers from around the world. As I'll show you, hopefully it'll play for you nicely. But if it doesn't, that's uh, their main bit, uh, one of their main bridges. Gwangan, um, excuse how I pronounce it, but or the Diamond Bridge. And uh, for about 10 minutes on Saturdays, they show, they can project some writing on it. And if you can't read it, it says, welcome to Basan astronomers. So or astronomers of the IUGA 2022, welcome to Basan. So I thought that was just a really wonderful uh, touch. And if you're wondering why there's a tiger on the beach, that's because it was the year of the, it is the year of the tiger. So let's get into the General Assembly 2022. And just here are just some, some numbers. Um, I've also got to the left there, just a quick snaps of the uh, schedule over the two weeks. It's way too small to read. So I'll just uh, talk you through it a bit. If you want to look up any more of these facts, you can go to their website, the uh, www.iauga2022.org. Well, you can see from my, my pie chart there, there were around uh, 1,860 attendants. And uh, you can see of those, there were around 300 online attendants or uh, delegates. They were uh, in person. There were about 460 Koreans or local delegates. And then about 1,100 in-person internationals. And I think Something quite interesting is of those uh, in-person internationals, there were about 60 Africans, of which 27 were South Africans. So a relatively small percentage. However, this is an overall a relatively small attendance, but it's not quite surprising considering that uh, uh, the COVID restrictions and the travel requirements and uh, all of those. Uh, issues. So during the two weeks, uh, the main program consisted of a multitude of different uh, talks and such, uh, which included uh, seven symposia. Uh, this was to do with, I mean, you can see on the, the website all the different topics, but they uh, some of the topics were machine learning and um, uh, multi-messenger solar physics, as well as uh, astronomical hazards for life on Earth. So some really important topics and current topics. There were also 10 focus meetings. So speaking about the physics of relativistic jets, 
for example, a dark and quiet sky prediction, as well as a multitude of other talks. Then there was a number of different, um, a number of different talks and lectures, including a public outreach program, which had two public lectures. And uh, what was great about these outreach pro or the, the lectures, the public lectures, is that it was very well attended by um, schools as well as uh, the public themselves. So there were also social events, um, including the usual lunches, the women in astronomy lunch and the young astronomers lunch. But I think also one of the takeaways here is that there were over 30 presentations over the two weeks that were given by African delegates. So uh, definitely, and these were talks that were over 20 minutes, so, and or, or uh, discussions or panel sessions. So definitely a, a wonderful representation from the African community. So what about the exhibits? Well, I joined part of the team that uh, was there to represent the General Assembly 2024. I also helped to represent the SALT and uh, the Southern African Large Telescope and the South African Astronomical Observatory stands, as well as AFAS. Now you can see, and I'm very, I'm, I'm very biased, but uh, I don't think it's too biased to say that we had uh, one of the most beautiful stands there. Um, you can see it had a, a very nice flow through it. We actually combined a lot of the stands. We had um, the SALT, SAO, AFAS, as well as the GA 2024 stand all in one group so that people who could come to us could learn all about African astronomy as well as what to expect in 2024. So one of the things that I found quite interesting just being at the, the stand and talking to people about African astronomy is how few people or how many people were unaware about African telescopes and African facilities. Um, never mind the large telescopes we have like SALT. So very few people, well, not very few, but um, there were quite a few people who didn't know about SALT and uh, as an example. And uh, when they heard about it, they were very, very interested in collaborating. So that's very exciting and something we can address over the coming years. So there was also on the other side of the room, there was the OAD stand and that consisted of a, uh, as part of the IAU stands. And that consisted of a uh, good collection of Africans, well, a lot of African representation. So that was quite wonderful having uh, Africans at both sides of the room that we could send people to and really create a good atmosphere in the hall itself. Apart from our two stands, there were about, uh, there's a number of other stands there. I'm not going to go through all of them, but in total, there were about 21 exhibits. So once again, COVID did uh, unfortunately reduce this. They were expecting about 50 exhibits. Uh, and you can see a lot of the big names aren't there. But as it was, it still managed to create a wonderful atmosphere inside this exhibit hall. The one main thing, or the main thing I want to, to just talk about uh, to, to finish up this talk is uh, what Takalani and Vanessa touched upon, is that really, I think the, the one of the main things that was so wonderful about the sun was that the African delegates really brought the African spirit to the sun. You can see here's a picture, Vanessa also showed it, a picture of us all in uh, traditional attire and just really African colors. And it wasn't just the attire, we also brought uh, the spirit in terms of the different interactions we had with the uh, international community. So this is just a picture from the um, AFAS stand where we held competitions that to, for people to find different um, African facilities across Africa. So some of those facilities that Tebe was just talking about. Then we had a wonderful tour vest team. So this is our um, conference organizers. They'll be giving a talk next up. They were absolutely fantastic. And um, held throughout the two weeks held fascinating or, or wonderful interactions that included tea tasting and biltong tasting, just to give the public a glimpse into uh, African and South African um, life. Then we also had uh, social media, so we had Twitter boards, and 
not, uh, let's not forget at the OED stand, we had the Kawanda giving us, uh, Kawanda is also a musician. So he was able to give us a singing and uh, there was dancing at the stand. So really this livened up the entire venue. And uh, last but not least, Voodoo was able to take us through the Jerusalem. <laughs> So that just gives you a bit of a taste of some of the, uh, the activities that we had and a bit of the, the spirit that we had during those two weeks. And you might have noticed just sneaking around in those uh, or around the back, it uh, attracted those of the Jerusalem, it attracted a lot of uh, internationals just joining us and, and including uh, the IAU presidents and uh, officials. So it was, it was great. Um, I also had during that time, someone come up to me and ask me, uh, and I think this was probably the highlight of that, that day is they asked me, uh, will they be dancing in uh, at the GA 2024 in Cape Town? And uh, we all said, of course. So that's something to look forward to. And really that's one of our main takeaways from the GA 2022. So although COVID significantly reduced the number of participants, exhibits, and outreach events um, and activities, the GA22 still managed to be a very impressive hybrid conference. So not only did it provide us with the wonderful opportunity to share knowledge in a wide range of scientific topics, it also uh, offered us a glimpse into Korea's impressive cultural and astronomical heritage. So, and I just want to reiterate, the primary takeaway, however, is the incredible sense of African spirit that was built up and shared with the uh, international community during the GA 2022. If those two weeks are anything to go by, we can certainly look forward to a very special General Assembly in 2024. Yeah, thanks Charles. <laughs> Thank you so much Sally for that uh, uh, very nice uh, uh, reflection on Busa and brought back out of memories, I'm sure, for a lot of <laughs> us that were there um, and, and and all the interesting cuisine that we got to taste. And I'm sure that when 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 the continent descends on Africa, we'll surely have a lot to show them um, in, 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 in terms of our culture and, 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 and our diversity. Um, and without taking more time, I would like to uh, present our next speaker, who is uh, Tembi Punenem Sima. Um, she's the Chief Operating Officer at Tourvest IME, and they are our professional conference organizer for 2024. And they're going to be speaking about expectations for Cape Town. Thank you, Tembi. You can take it away. Thank you very much, Charles. Um, good morning, colleagues. I am not alone today. I am joined by Janine, who you have all met. Um, as well as her team that is based in Cape Town. So Janine, if you can just show your face for a second and wave hi to everybody. Um, so thank you very much. So Sally, thank you so much for the compliments that you've just given us. And I'm very, very sorry that I did miss um, this trip in Busan, but I promise not to miss Cape Town. And we will certainly make sure that we carry the African spirit in every little facet of this event um, as we go along. Obviously, the input of the NOC and all the direction and discussions that will be taking place there are very key to us making sure that we deliver the, the expectations. So you've created a huge expectation of the African infused uh, event and we, we shall deliver. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let me just do this quickly. Okay, um, sorry about that. Okay, so um, our my role really on um, in today's meeting is just to create um, a path for you to um, uh, follow when you arrive um, um, in Cape Town in 2024. Just so we make sure that those expectations are addressed. And for us, really, we are 
absolutely excited and thrilled as a team that we could actually be working with uh, this amazing community, um, especially considering the recent uh, seismic event, if I may, I may make uh, that, uh, I can use that adjective, that happened on the 11th of July with the James Webb Space, Space um, Telescope images that were released, very exciting, and then NASA crashing a spacecraft into an asteroid. I mean, these are all out of um, uh, out of world experiences, and we are very excited. Um, and even my son's changed his own uh, profile picture to say, "Mom is going to Mars." So I hope I, I become and I'll join this community very soon. So just to give you a taste, um, an introduction into the destination, I'm gonna play a small little video um, that hopefully sets the tone for the rest of my presentation. Okay, there is no volume, just the audio. Sorry, uh, sorry, Janine, there's no volume. Yes, it's just the audio, that's all. Oh, okay. So, Tim, we might have to I think... uh, share again and then just tick the box in the bottom that says uh, share sound. Yes. Um... Okay, so maybe, maybe um, Tara, if you, are, if you can hear me, can I just hand over to you to just do the video quickly? You have problems? Sorry about that. Sometimes technology doesn't respond when we want it to. We'll just give it one, one more second. Um, so you can just stop the share and then and then just start it again. I think that should be awesome. Yeah, so when you share screen, you can also just click where it says share sound as well. Um, there's a box at the bottom. Welcome to Cape Town, South Africa. The future home. Okay. I think maybe we can we can um, share the video at the end because I think it's giving us a bit of a okay. challenge. Well, that's fine. So if you don't mind, I'll share my screen again and just go straight into the presentation. Apologies about that. We wanted to create the mood really so you can um, have a, a sense of what, um... oh, there we go. So. Yeah, I think if you, you can just click on the play and I think it should be okay. Oh. <laughs> okay, no, I think this is fine. I think we'll, we'll just proceed with the presentation. So can everybody see my screen again? Yep, we can see it.
Okay, so as a brief summary, we are two of us IME. IME stands for Incentive Meetings and Events. Uh, what we do best is organizing, uh, as a professional uh, conference organizer, we organize such events as the one that we're discussing uh, today. We specialize in in-house flight solutions with, uh, uh, through ticketing, tailor-made incentive programs, uh, travel programs, especially um, with um, tours, pre and post tours. We have the solutions in terms of te technology, particularly financial accounting and reporting solutions that we use with all our events that bring the success of the events to bear. And of course, any other tailor-made global immersion. So that brings the whole um, value chain to, to, to the customers. I think something is, is wrong here now. I'm getting error messages. So this is a complete team. Can, can everybody still see my screen, Charles? No, your screen is now gone together. Mm. So we can't see anything. Okay. So I think, let me start again. Can you see now? Yeah, we can see it now. I think let me leave it in this format and not do a slide share because I think something's happening. So apologies, colleagues. I mean, I um, shouldn't be taking so much time on technical issues. So very briefly, I was just showing you our capacity as a as a as, as IME, what we do, and um, showing you the value of the service that we offer. And this is the full team that offers the service. And then followed by I again we wanted to play a small little video showing you the kind of events that we've delivered that are similar to the one that we, 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 we are discussing today. But I think we'll show that again at the end if time permits. I'm going to skip this particular slide. So the venue where um, GA 2024 will be taking place is at the Cape Town International Convention Center. Uh, the city ICC is the leading international convention center on the continent. And um, uh, under guidance from the, LO, the GA 2024 LOC, um, in the process of um, going through the contracts and resigning and committing and putting down all the deposits um, in, the coming, in the coming days. In terms of flights and bookings, we have a um, technology and an app called Travel IT, which you can find on the App Store or on, on, um, on Apple. This technology is um, a, a super technology that assists you to book your flights. Search for search and compare various options. It's a it's a it's a an on it's a live booking facility that enables you to book and confirm. And we offer as as one of the um, as the largest tourism entity um, in, in in Southern Africa we do negotiate and get the best rates and we are known in the industry for, for that. So we are comfortable that what we are gonna be bringing to you would be the best rates um, available. And um, as I mentioned, it is a mobile app and it assists you uh, track, um, track your whole um, uh, travel from check-in all the way through to um, your, your destination. And in terms of transportation, so once your booking um, is done and you've chosen your flights and you've chosen the dates that you want to, to, to travel, um, because some delegates may choose to come in a bit early, our transportation, we've got a full fleet to cater for all the requirements, depending on whatever the brief is from, from yourselves. And we manage all your transport requirements as professionally as possible, from individual car hire to transfers to shuttles, and um, we would have a um, assistance or a welcome desk at the airport to help facilitate your um, trans uh, transit from collecting your luggage, be met at the airport and um, escorted through to where the transport um, um, the buses are outside the terminal building. We have we are quite experienced and have done quite a lot of um, transport logistics for VIP and, and related protocol, knowing that there are there is always uh, and there are always VIPs that get invited and they would need special treatment. 
and special and um, transport logistics. We have the capacity and the uh, vehicles um, that would be required to meet the standard of service that um, you want to deliver for people that are invited to the event. In terms of visas, we would assist you with your uh, visa, um, with visa application process. We'll make sure that you get your invitation letters to come to the conference and accommodation confirmation letters from the various accommodation um, hotels or b and that you may have chosen um, to stay in. And we would assist you with any other information pertaining to health requirements and vaccine protocols, et cetera, et cetera. So your whole visa application process um, is managed by us um, so that you don't have um, a lot to worry about. When it comes to accommodation, two of us, as two of us, we take the full risk and responsibility as the LOC um, discussions um, will, uh, as the LOC discussions progress, we will be discussing and finalizing what block bookings really we have to secure from a three-star all the way through to a five-star hotel, because some people choose to travel um, at a higher level than others. And of course, we manage the um, hospitality desk at the hotels making sure that everything is going according to expectations for all our delegates staying in these different hotels and um, also providing a travel assistance desk. So maybe you want to change your flight ticket or any other travel requirements that you may have. So we would have that hospitality desk at the airport. In terms of social events, I think Sally has sort of given an indication of what we can do as South Africans. So we really intend to make this the most memorable um, GA 2024 that, that has ever taken place. And um, I really enjoyed the, the Jerusalem dance over there um, in, in Busan. And I'm sure a similar dance or the actual Jerusalem dance that we'll, we'll, we'll do here in Cape Town will be Spectacular, Sally, I promise. So those who attended the recent INC, uh, INPC will remember the welcome dinner um, and welcome reception uh, function as well as the gala dinner at the end. So we really aim to please and in consultation with the LOC, we make sure that we deliver on all of the aspects and make it um, this infused African and South African um, event that people will never forget. Coupled to that, we do have daytime or uh, day tours, um, sightseeing and excursions covering every part and every, every part and every aspect of Cape Town. Whether you want to go to a small um, outing in one of our finest uh, wine farms, or you want to experience wildlife, or you want to go up Table Mountain or helicopter ride around uh, Cape Town or really mess yourself with different cultures. There's District 6 with all those colorful houses, very, very um, um, you know, world-renowned area of Cape Town and a very rich history in terms of the struggle uh, from the past to the um, to present. Or oh, of yeah. course... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, you, but you don't find anything good. <laughs> okay. okay. Sorry about that. Somebody found my presentation funny, which is fine. <laughs> and of course, we also have um, an open uh, bus uh, tour through um, the, the different sides of Cape Town. You can always choose. At the back of that, we also have, um, if right. for those, can you hear me? Yep, I was just giving the five minutes. Oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm almost finished. We also have pre and post tours um, for those who may choose to come to South Africa earlier or not just South Africa, may choose to have a pre and post tours any part of the continent um, before the conference or after the conference. We are your one-stop shop. This part of the um, conference in terms of uh, tours, pre and post tours, we would organize it in consultation with one of our divisions within two of us. So it's everything, um, as I said, we are your one-stop shop and we can help you organize the most wonderful and memorable tours um, to supplement the conference. In terms of guest relations, we take guest relations very, very seriously from the welcome desk at the airport because we need you to feel welcome and um, already part of the, uh, of the event as soon as you land. 
hospitality desks in the different hotels, uh, this from three to five star, as I previously mentioned. That's also very important, and that's where we get to engage with you on a daily basis and resolve any any or other issues that you may have. And of course, during the conference, at the conference itself, there's always the information or information desk or information kiosk where you can go for um, further assistance. In terms of past events, uh, over and above the video that I had wanted to show um, earlier on is just to give you an indication. And all of these events, you can actually uh, Google them to see um, the extent of the success um, that we were able to deliver for our clients. We recently delivered um, the Tourism Business Council, which was actually the inaugural um, tourism leadership conference taking place here in Sun City. And of course, um, uh, as some of you would recognize this other event that we recently delivered in Cape Town, the INCP um, 2022 in Cape Town. On that note, thank you very much. We shall see you in Cape Town in 2024. So, Tara, I think if you can, I really did want to just play uh, this video just to give people a sense, or those who may not be familiar with Cape Town, just to give a sense of um, 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 you know, the welcome they'll be receiving. Let me try one more time uh, to play this video. If I fail, then I will uh, stop sharing my screen and close the presentation. Tembe, I will, I will assist you with that. I'll share my screen. If you can just okay. stop sharing, then I will okay. play it. Okay. okay, perfect. Thank you. Welcome to Cape Town, South Africa. Welcome to Cape Town, South Africa, the future home of the IU General Assembly in 2024. Known as South Africa's mother city, Cape Town is a city designed for visitors. It's a vibrant, uh, there's no, safe, there's no images. It's just the sound. Oh my goodness. Okay, then. Yeah. yeah, I think we'll, we'll we'll send the link on the chat group for people can have a look. Yeah, at I, I, I think yeah. that'll be much better because we are we already yeah. out of time. Thank you so okay. much, Tim. And, okay. and, and, and thank you very so. much, Charles. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks. All right, thank you. Uh, yep. So unfortunately, we don't have much time, but we'll just take maybe a, a few questions for if if anyone has questions for any of our speakers that spoke. Um, in the session, we'll, we'll just have time for, for, for a few questions. So you can just uh, put your hand up and then uh, we'll recognize you and, 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 and you can speak. There's a hand up from Vanessa. Um, you can unmute yourself, Vanessa. Hi, um, thanks for the presentation. So just the previous presentation, I was wondering if you could say a little bit about hybrid and what your experience with that is and how you build conferences that are inclusive for people who also aren't physically in the venue. All right. Um, that's the that's a question for two of us. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We we do um, have um, ex very uh, deep experience in hybrids. We that's the only reason we could survive during COVID. Um, so yes, we are able to do live and hybrid at the same time because we bring to bear the uh, huge technology infrastructure that we have. And I don't know if that answers your your, your question, uh, but Janine, you may want to add and make, make, maybe some, make some examples of our past ones. Janine? Vanessa, does it answer your question though? Kind of. I mean, maybe we, maybe we can discuss offline later. I mean, more detail would be interesting just to know your kind of approach, um, you know, like what it involves, but with the limited time, maybe someone else has a question. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Vanessa, for your question. Um, if there's anyone else that has a question, uh, you can go ahead and, and ask or a comment. Um, this will be great. Okay, so if there are no questions, so I'm just even checking in the chat if there are no questions, I think that we can just take a break. Our next session will start at um, 11, which is 15 minutes from now. Um, we did share to gather town uh, and would like to thank uh, Vanessa Moss and the team at the future of meetings that provided us with 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 the platform for 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 gather town just to give everyone an experience of sort of uh, 
that you can socialize even if we are not meeting um, in person. Um, so I'll just make a quick demo on the Gather Town. So you would have seen already the link that I shared yesterday. So when you enter your Gather Town space, you'll either log in, you'll have to, to enter your name. And then this is the space that you will enter into. Um, we've got a number of private spaces that you can enter. For example, this is uh, one private space here. And then you can come and sit and chat uh, with your friends and, and maybe catch up or maybe even um, start talking about some discussions that we can have later. I see Vanessa and is, is, is already in here as well. And we've got a number of other people. Then we have another room here um, where, you, where again, you can come in. It also has a number of private spaces and tables where you can sit and, and, and just chat with your friends and catch up as well and start talking about maybe even the discussions towards the vision document as well. And then over here, we've got a map of Africa. So if you do visit this room, please uh, uh, do come to the map of Africa. It will ask you to press X if you want to enter, then you just press X. And in this space, basically what you can do is that you can just maybe color in which part of the African continent you from, and also maybe just leave um, some 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 comments and 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 just tell us even about yourself and even astronomy activities that are taking place um, in that part of the continent, or maybe even just put up and tell us what what observatories they are in that part of the world. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing screen and um, we'll see everyone back here at 11. So at 11, uh, please do leave the, the gather town space and come back onto the Zoom link and then we can continue with the session. Um, so thank you and we'll see all of you back here again at 11 and you can even go stretch your legs um, at gather town. Thanks. All right, we even got the link put into, into the chat. If anyone doesn't have that link, forget the top.
Hello? Can anybody, can anybody hear me? Yeah, hi, hi. Hi, Nurali. Yes, yes. yes. We hear you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to do here. I mean, I'm, I'm a bit lost here. I don't yeah, know. yeah. So we we are currently on break, Nuruli. So we are back now at eleven, and Vanessa is sharing this session. No, no. I'm I'm talking about the gather town. I don't know what what to do there. You know. I mean, I can't I can't figure out what to what, to, what to, because everybody is on mute and I don't, <laughs> as if my this is my first time that I'm 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 I'm, I'm using one gather town. It, it, it does take a bit of getting used to Nurani, so we are <laughs> we are also trying to 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 figure out exactly our way okay. around it. But um, okay. yep, no I problem. Think All right, you, 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 you can find Rika and Vanessa on 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 the gather space if you if you can hear them, and then they can help you navigate your way around. And, and no, I'm I'm help. I'm on Gather Town actually. Let me yeah. let me let me press again on the link. Okay. All right, Nuruli. I think we're starting our next session now, so you you, you can All right, just. Okay. No. No. No problem. All right. Okay. You can All right. just meet yourself on the Zoom. Or you can try it again at lunchtime. We'll reopen the room at lunchtime. Yeah, it's okay. All right. And Thank then at you. least have a slightly longer, have a slightly longer go. Yeah. Okay. 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 I can. Yeah, that's why you're good to go. Okay. Great. So welcome back, everybody. Um, that is a very short tea break. I hope you actually manage to boil the kettle and get a cup of tea and uh, sit down um, or we wander through the gather town space. I see some people are already in the bar, depending on uh, what time of day it is for you. Okay, so the session that we're running now is uh, really kind of focused on some of the work that's been happening um, in the lead up to 2024. And this first session is starting looking specifically at the Vision 2024 funded projects. So it's a session where you have to, we've got very short um, videos or speeches up to only two to three minutes each. And uh, this is really to give you a flavor of the kinds of uh, Vision 2024 projects that we've got. So I'm just going to be uh, sharing uh, my screen and playing these, uh, these videos. Um, And the first here is an update from Anna from uh, This is Africa. a set of updates on projected six and that seven executed by Space in Africa. Projected six is to create a dashboard of current active astronomers, students, and early career researchers active in the African astronomy scene. The other part of the project is to build an astronomy library as a repository for astronomy works in Africa or by African authors. The dashboard and the digital library have been built and are undergoing review by Alphas. The next steps for this project is to swap out the dummy data for accurate data from Alphas and to complete data gathering, process validation, visualization, and finally deployment. Here's a look at the dashboard. On the dashboard, you can see a page for Alphas members. This page visualizes number of Alphas members, their affiliations, regional offices, members by countries, members by regional office, offices by region, and their membership type. So this drop down, you can see the raw data on the list of AFAS members, which includes their countries, names of members, membership types, affiliations, coordinators, and their email addresses. The meetings tab is a calendar of past and future AFAS events. Under institutions, we can see the number of research centers and facilities available in Africa. We can also see the number of ongoing projects, research groups, research centers by countries, facilities, conditions, access types, and astronomy facilities. Opportunities include details on available internship, scholarship, grants, events, job openings, and skill acquisition opportunities available in the African astronomy scene. Observatories leads us to the number of observatories available in the African astronomy scene, including the names of the observatories, descriptions, their locations, and the websites. Projects brings us to the number of astronomy projects in Africa. It includes the visualization on the funding, the regional offices in charge of these projects, countries of, of implementation, project funders, project category, and statuses of the projects. The digital library of all publications in astronomy and space science in Africa from or by African authors have also been developed. It currently contains about 10,676 publications dating back to 1872. The library is also constantly updated. The next steps for the digital library is to incorporate reviews 
and updates with new publications and avail it for public use. The dashboard also needs to be updated with the future work feature and the ability for African authors to upload their works to the library. Status updates on Project 37, articles and promotions. Project 37 is to publicize astronomy events, job opportunities, scholarships, grants, and state of the industry articles. This project is not restricted by a timeline and is continually evaluated for impact. Several astronomy related publications have been able to reach over 3,000 people since the project inception. Space in Africa has published over 27 news analysis and opportunity articles on astronomy development in Africa since the inception of the project. The published articles have garnered over 3,000 reads on the Space in Africa website and over 10,000 unique impressions on our social media pages. The next steps for this project is the continuous flow of information of relevant astronomy events and news and the evaluation of the effectiveness of the publications on the African astronomy sector. Here are some of the published articles. Here's an opportunity article. Here's an analytical article. Here are some of the social media posts on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. So I see there's a question um, in the chat there. Um, please feel free, Anna, just to respond directly in the chat, and then we'll, we'll stop for some questions at the end. So next up, we've got Chuku Jeku um, from Nigeria. My name is Dr. Chuku Jeku from Nigeria, and I'm here to talk about our project titled Astro Prison in Nigeria, proposal number two. The ultimate goal of Astro Prison is to educate, prepare, and inspire prisoners for a better life after imprisonment through astronomy-related activities. We intend to collaborate with the Nigerian Correctional Services, the Camelite Prisoners Interest Organization, CAPU, and other strategic partners to deliver some entrepreneurship skills like astro-tourism, snare farming, and fishing to the inmates. Most importantly, we will use the astronomy concept of pair without as a tool for value reorientation on the part of these inmates. Where we are presently, Astro Prison was tentatively slated to take place in November 2022. However, the minor delays experienced before the grant was received in late September 2022 ended up disrupting our project implementation plan. Nevertheless, we have started consultations with our strategic partners, the Correctional Center Authorities and CAPU, so as to pick a suitable date for the event, which may likely take place in February 2023. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Next up, we've got um, Doreen Agaba from uh, Space Tech Uganda. On this forum for astronomy in Africa, I present on the project African Astronomer for a Day. We chose this project as a non-conventional method for astronomy outreach and curriculum intervention in a multidisciplinary approach. We have our target group as youth from upper high school, university, and the general public. Our method of implementing this project is in form of an essay contest that will be held on an annual basis. Selected topics will be chosen um, upon consultation with the National Astronomical Education Coordinators for each country on Africa. Uh, tentatively, we now have three themes for this year. Innovation in astronomical instruments, big data, and reimagining astronomy for the future. In coordination with these NIACs all over the continent of Africa, we will put together tasks and put timelines to them, uh, distribute these per country, and put together a panel of judges uh, who will judge the essays that will be submitted by these youth. The winning essays will be awarded, and we hope to be able to lobby for a trip to a prestigious astronomical facility for these winners. All the essays will be showcased in an online newsletter by extracting highlights from each essay. 
the general output from this project will be a forum for Africa's astronomical um, youth uh, on which they, they will be able to express their interests and ideas and imaginations as we continue to provide a platform for young people to contribute towards astronomical interventions on our continent. Thank you to the IAU. Thank you for listening. Thanks very much, uh, Doreen. Um, I think what we're also trying to do is put uh, links up to these individual presentations on the program um, so that people can go back and have a look at them afterwards. Okay, next up we've got Melvin Hall talking about a couple of uh, interventions that they, they're running um, at an outcome of Dara. Hello, everybody. Uh, just want to give you an update on the uh, projects coming up for GA 2024 that uh, emanate from the, the DARA project. So I'm Professor Melvin Hoare from the University of Leeds, who leads the DARA project. Um, so we submitted three project ideas, uh, sort of building on the uh, legacy of the, the development in Africa with radio astronomy training program. Uh, the first of those was to uh, continue to offer uh, CV workshops to uh, people being trained uh, in, well, first of all, radio astronomy, but maybe more widely in astronomy. Uh, uh, as, as they come towards the end of the course, they can they can sign up for a, a, a CV advice. So we, we organize a, a panel of uh, people, not just from academia, but uh, from industry development business as well, uh, to provide advice uh, on a one you know, uh, one person for 15, 20 minutes to a, to a panel of six people or so. So that's what we've been doing for the DARA trainees for the last uh, seven years or so. Um, there's been a little hiatus where all of this is not funded on it. It's kind of doing it on a best efforts basis now. And so the, the final training uh, only just recently uh, finished. So we're um, waiting to to organize a final sort of what we call of our annual network meeting, which will be virtual sort of hybrid model this year um, for the last couple of cohorts. And uh, that, then we will carry out our CV workshop for them. Then in coming years, we plan to, to open this up because um, there, there won't be any more DARA training after that. So we will, but we want to open that up to, uh, to other uh, people coming to the end of a, you know, a master's or PhD training, probably undergraduate honours and master's level uh, students for their next uh, steps. Um, it'd be good to, you know, if anyone wants to volunteer to help uh, with that, then, then please get in touch with myself. Um, the next project we were want to do uh, is to, uh, again, because of the pandemic, then a lot of uh, the DARA training moved online. So we've got a lot of recorded material uh, and uh, therefore, um, in principle, we can uh, offer that as a as an online uh, sort of training repository. Uh, um, so again, we we need to tidy that up. So we've only we're only just coming to the end of the project. So we we just need some time to tidy all that up and get it a bit more presentable. Um, so again, obviously that focuses on uh, aspects of of radio astronomy, uh, but there are you know sort of data reduction tutorials and analysis that you you can download and uh, and have a go at if you have the right computers. Um, something we've also been working with our partners with uh, is the getting uh, remote training interferometers uh, up and running that can be used across Africa. So uh, we've been sending uh, some of the DARA trainees to NWU with James Chibosi in uh, Northwest University in South Africa, where he's uh, basically getting a, a four element uh, radio astronomy, a radio interferometer up and running. Uh, and also we've been providing some funding uh, to UCT uh, as one of their postdocs to, to get a two element uh, training interferometer uh, up and running. So again, the idea is that these will be remotely operable anywhere uh, uh, for African students. Uh, the final project was the idea of a, an alumni network. Um, so obviously we've got over 300 people who've been through the, the DARA training. Um, we've been working we plan to work with uh, DARA Big Data, who have you know their own uh, set of alumni, and uh, they're working with uh, people at uh, IDEA, OID, Soreo uh, to 
develop a, an African-owned uh, alumni network. So, so starting from the, the DARA students who've been through the process, um, and then we can perhaps, you know, build out from there and uh, hopefully um, link up with other projects uh, and, and gradually broaden that out. Uh, that's the idea. Okay, so that's uh, that's an update uh, from me. Uh, and uh, you know, good luck to everyone who's building towards uh, GA 2024. Thank you. Great, thanks, Melvin. And um, we're looking forward to seeing those uh, projects coming online. Next up, we've got uh, Miracle uh, Chibizo, who will be telling us about a, um, a citizen science project. Hello, and welcome to this program where I shall be talking about asteroid hunting, which is a citizen science project run by the International Swimming Research Collaboration. <clears throat> My name is Mirak Chibuzo Marcel, and I'm the Nigeria Nai contact person. I promote hands-on astronomy research programs and citizen science projects in Nigeria and Africa at large. Uh, the asteroid research is a month-long hands-on program we are ordinary people called citizen scientists help in the search for new asteroids. They also number and catalog them with a computer program called Astrometrica. The data that we use are gotten from the Penn Stars Observatory located at the University of Hawaii. Uh, along with making new discoveries, participants, most of which are students, acquire some research skills that will contribute to their future academic pursuits. Uh, in addition to these, the Asteroid Research Citizen Science Project is part of NASA's Planetary Defense Program in the monitored asteroid that have the potential to hit Earth in the future. Our Asteroid Citizen Science Group, called the Pan African Asteroid Research, has engaged with higher institution lecturers and researchers, national astronomy coordinators, astronomy clubs, and high schools from more than 35 African countries. Our target is to reach out to as many schools as possible. If you're interested in joining my group, you can reach out to me via my email displayed on the screen. Thank you so much. That's a really brilliant uh, intervention. Uh, well done, uh, Miracle. Okay, next up we have uh, P. Day who is going to be talking to us about an uh, intervention from Benin. Um, I think this is in French. The project consists of uh, developing the réseau des clubs d'astronomie au Benin à travers la création uh, de clubs scolaires dans les collèges d'enseignement général uh, d'Apassa, de Malawi et de Mélé Djonou Semetiapo situé dans les villes de Port Novo et d'Adjara. Chacune de ces écoles bénéficiera d'une lunette astronomique avec laquelle élèves et enseignants pourront euh, faire des observations et aussi des expériences d'ordre pédagogique. Les objectifs tiennent compte des actions 5, 6, 11 et 12 de l'Assemblée générale de l'Union internationale d'astronomie qui se tiendra en Afrique du Sud en 2024. Les points de nos activités, jusqu'à l'heure où nous sommes, nous avons déjà pris les télescopes, nous les avons déjà réceptionnés, et ces trois télescopes, et nous sommes en train de prendre des contacts avec les chefs d'établissement afin qu'ils puissent nous envoyer des enseignants, cinq enseignants par collège qui seront formés sur les basiques de l'astronomie et aussi sur le mode d'usage des télescopes. Et à leur tour, ils pourront initier les apprenants à manipuler les télescopes et aussi commencer par partager avec eux les connaissances scientifiques et développer correctement ces réseaux que nous allons installer dans les écoles. Alors, la formation de ces enseignants aura lieu en, en, en novembre prochain et 
dès le mois de décembre, il y aura remise des lunettes à ces trois écoles. Et déjà, même en décembre, et on pourra commencer par mener les, les, les activités avec ces clubs scolaires conformément au cahier de charge que les deux parties et, et vont prendre connaissance et signer. Thank you very much, uh, Peter. Um, next up, we have a, a video from um, Proven Emmanuel on uh, cultural astronomy in Ghana. Good day. My name is Proven Ajou Emmanuel from the Ghana Radio Astronomy Observatory and the Ghana Space Science and Technology Institute. This is project is um, an Earthing Rich Cultural Astronomy in ancient Ghana. It's an IAU OAD which in 2024 funded projects, which seeks to research about cultural astronomy and how it affects the ancient people in Ghana, like the farmers, the fishermen, the hunters, the religious people, how they are able to mark their days and all that. We visit one of the coastal towns, which is called uh, Botiano. Uh, it's a local gang community. And uh, we met the chief fisherman and his secretary. And they showed us many things about astronomy that affect their work directly, like the rise and sets of certain stars, like the star called um, um, uh, Maui, which comes in July and set and rises in the west and sets in the east. And this uh, star uh, makes them to get uh, a fish called Skitasco boys or herring. And there are other stars called Wokebiele and they are called uh, Bochwe, Kwakwala, uh, the Southern Cross, and all that. These are many things that we seek to. A research as we go about these projects. We also intend to visit Lake Boson Tree, a natural lake, to understand how it was formed from the locals and then to document it. I'll be very grateful for your comments and suggestions to make this project a better one. So I look forward to seeing you. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Preven. Yeah, fantastic. Next up, we've got uh, Solahiri. That's right. And um, he will tell us a bit more about astronomy in Madagascar. Everyone, I'm Sulia Ranjampan from the ACO and the University of Antananarivo. I'll be talking to you today about an astronomy conference to be held in Madagascar next year. The main objective of this conference is to cover the Malagasy Assumi community during a three days hybrid uh, research conference to prepare for a better participation for the IAUGA 2024 and beyond. So it will be a local event to rally people in Madagascar toward the GA. be the first astronomy research conference for Malagas astronomer and student based in Madagascar and elsewhere. We aim to help the community to strengthen the quality of sharing the research results and prepare students to participate in the IAU conference. All Malagas astronomer and student across the world will be encouraged to participate. The estimated timeline is that um, we'll be sending out the first announcement in June next year. The preliminary schedule will be available from September next year and the conference will take place in December 2023. Due to the logistic, the total number of participants will be limited to around 40. For specific deliverables, we have two action items, gathering and sharing research results and have a separate session on participation for the GA in the program. Reaching out the local scientists for awareness of the AAU GA and astronomy, there will be at least two expected outcome. Uh, we, it will help the student uh, to better prepare for international conference also. And again, as a main objective, it will uh, 
uh, help to maximize the participation of uh, the Malagasy student as somewhere well to the uh, IAUGA. Please get in touch if you have questions or comments. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Alagiri. Yeah, it's going to be really important to have all of um, all of these students who will probably come to South Africa and help us with um, the logistics and, of course, be able to participate. So next up, we have uh, Tola Veresa from uh, Gemma University. Hello, participants of Astronomy Forum 2022 in Africa. I'm Tolu Brusa from Jimma University, Ethiopia. Here, I'm going to present one of the art Vision 2024, which I and my team have awarded under project number 32, entitled as the Maori Program for Astronomy Development, abbreviated as GLOBFAC. The project focuses on outreach program that includes outreach activities in astronomy to bring talent in STEM and astronomy, assessment in cultural astronomy assess for the community guide for career classes in astronomy and the network of uh, graduates sharing of experience etc initiating in all agreements and projects for astronomy development implementation localities and the scope localities schools universities and some Institutes relevant to the project scope mainly school and the university communities are used where students are focused some institutes and other relevant to the project. Project team all astrophysicists with a rich experience in astronomy program. Duration is one year, budget is uh, 29,000 rand per 20 rand is um, uh, offered by or at file, 9,000 is raised locally. Status and updates. Activities and the timeline of the project is met, as in the proposal, grant secured from OAP, local fundraising is communicated and promised. Uh, communications met, schools, universities, and some institutes relevant to the project have communicated. Uh, about 10 schools, about five universities, cultural and the tourism bureaus of Oromia Regional State, and others. Workshop designs for a career development and the guide is made. Logistic and the work plan is ready. Thank you for your attention. Thanks very much, uh, Tony. It looks like an exciting project. Right, next up, we have a project uh, run by Watel and Hassan um, around uh, London Refugee Camp Outreach Program. <laughs> Yeah. 
Thanks very much, uh, Watela. It's a lovely compilation. So next up, we've got a presentation from um, the future of meetings, a bit about um, options for alternate and uh, more inclusive kinds of meetings. Hello, I'm Ron Ekes, and we are gathered here at the Virtual Parks Radio Telescope to represent the future of meetings community. But how about we move up into the dish instead? With this video, we'd like to get you thinking about some what-if scenarios when it comes to planning the future of our meetings, conferences, and collaborations. Only your imagination need limit the spaces where we can meet. What if we could meet and collaborate with people from all around the world, regardless of where you're physically located? What if technology allowed the same togetherness with others informally, being together socially even while at a distance? What if you could give a talk and have all the benefits of being on stage, but with an audience distributed around the world? What if we could link real data to virtual objects and bring new ideas to life with collaborators from around the world? What if technology could allow you to experience different places and cultures with your friends and colleagues without ever having to travel anywhere? Avete mai immaginato di fare una presentazione nella vostra lingua preferita e che tutti i partecipanti la potessero seguire nella loro? What if you could give a talk in your preferred language and everyone watching could experience it in this? What if we could meet in a place that goes beyond being there, somewhere humans cannot reach? Great, thanks very much uh, for showing us that the sky is not the limit. The next talk is uh, Prosperi Sempemba from Copperfield University. Prosperi, would you like to share your screen? Great, you've got two minutes. But if you're talking, we can't hear you yet. You can hear me now? Yes, we can. Thanks. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, greetings to everyone attending this meeting. My name is Prosper Simpenda, and my team are in the picture there that organized and participated in the 2022 PASIA Summer School in Livingstone in Zambia. I'll talk briefly about PASIA, give an introduction, participants, funding, uh, legacy, and conclusion. The Pan-African School for Imaging Astronomers, PASIA, is an experiential short course in astronomy for African West students, which is designed and taught by a team of scientists from Africa and around the world. It uses educational research principles and inquiry-based learning and that's the reason why we emphasize the involvement of STEM teachers. Previously, this school was called West African International School for Young Astronomers. We attracted uh, 36 participants from 13 African countries, Malawi, Kenya, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Botswana, Namibia, South Africa, Tanzania, Egypt, Nigeria, Cameroon, Ghana, and Zambia. And of the 36 students, we had nine teachers. It was in two streams, the postgraduate and undergraduate stream. 
and we had 11 instructors from South Africa, Nigeria, Canada, and Zambia. So funding uh, came from different sources. We had funding from the OAD, the AFAS, the Copper Belt University, SAROD, Vision 2024, and Project 24, the Minister of Education. We also had funding from international organizations like Danlab Institute, AstroPi, and PAPSIN. So what Ligas does this school live? It was the first time this school was called Pan-African to involve all participants from Africa. It's the first time it was held in Zambia. It had multiple sources of funding, uh, attracting participants from 13 African countries. And these participants are looking forward to further involvement in astronomy. And therefore, it is a seed for the vision 2024 and beyond. And also at this meeting, we had side meetings for Sarod. And these are just pictures for the official opening. This is the team for instructors. And these students um, are now very curious to look at what is happening in the sky. Uh, on 23rd October, they captured the halo that appeared in Zambia. And so we see that we are, we are planting a seed that needs to be nurtured. In conclusion, year 2022 was a great success. It drew participants from 13 African countries. And we see that this is a good ground for placing young people in the Vision 2024 and also in the preparation for the GA 2024. Uh, again, share with you pictures of that event uh, we have here the Dean of the School of Mathematics and Natural Sciences presenting certificates. Uh, this was during one of the sessions and this is the group photo. Thank you for listening to my short presentation. Thanks very much, uh, Prosperi. We've really got that uh, hot off the press, don't we? Um, if you can just stop sharing your screen then we can, uh, I can share the other video. So next up, we have an update um, from uh, James Chibuezi on the Aran Initiative. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is James Chibuezi. I'm here to give you updates on the hands-on radio interferometry training, uh, which should be done with the Northwest University Radio Interferometer. I'm based at Northwest University in Potestrom. And the update is that the installation of the four element interferometer is now fully completed. Um, you can see an aerial view of the interferometer lying uh, 30 kilometers out on the outskirts of Pochestrum. Those are the four dishes, and that's the control room right there. And this is a site for well, our optical telescope. And we do have a space physics program, which will be installed right here in the white container. And this is a picture of some of the people who participated in the uh, installation. They were my few of my MSc students and a couple of students from the data projects uh, within SADIC countries, within Southern Africa countries. And here, I'll give you a glimpse into the installation process. Um, sorry, it's a long nine minute video. I'm not able to show you everything, but this is um, just a drone video covering all that went down during the installation stages. Um, the in installation of this main dish, uh, putting together everything, including stages where you see the students um, assembling the dish itself. Um, yeah, they were really uh, extremely helpful with the assembly of the dishes. So now the dishes are all um, standing. It was literally DIY project where we did all the installation and the testing of the drive systems ourselves. Um, of course, made some mistake, fixed it, um, and tried again and again. So regarding coming over to Pochestrom for a training, yes, we will accept. Uh, I'll open up the COF application for interested participant to apply to have a hands-on training on interferometry and that will the call will be open sometime in November. Um, I plan that the hands-on training will take place uh, in a, maybe the last week of February in 2023. So please be on the lookout for this. Thank you.
Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, James. Um, so that's something to look out for that call for proposal. Uh, yeah, call for application, sorry. Okay, the last two presentations of the session are going to be in person. So Ola uh, Yanka, please feel free to share your screen and give us your two minutes. Are you online, Ola Yanka? Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Great. Um, so I'm trying to share my screen now. So I'm going to be very fast. We had, um, um, we were part of the people that got the AWB Nigeria. Good morning, everyone. My name is Olai by the way, and I'm um, the founder of AWB Nigeria. And uh, so we had, we were one of the people that got the Vision 2024 grant. And uh, we already had the, the program that we, we planned. We started because we had to collaborate with other organizations so that we could um, get to extend it beyond the scope of what the uh, grant was meant for. So I'm going to be um, very fast. Um, we had other partners and then, so our major focus is on girls, um, um, high school girls in Lagos State in Nigeria. Lagos State is in southwestern part of Nigeria. And over the years, we noticed that um, we haven't had much of um, astronomy education or how to teach programs in Lagos State. So we we set out to have this program where we uh, we were trying to get as many girls as possible. We had planned for a hundred girls. We ended up with a hundred and eighty. We had collaborated with the Nigerian Navy. Um, so the Nigerian Navy has um, a school, um, a high school, where we went and then we spoke with the girls there. We had. Um, 180 of them in the hall, and then we had various um, kinds of um, hands-on um, activities, uh, budging on astronomy and STEM education, and um, we had the girls, you know, divided into various groups where we were able to have um, take questions, most especially because it was the first time they were hearing about astronomy, so it was really uh, an interesting. Um, experience for my team as well, because we had to, you know, like literally start from the scratch, but it was really worth all of the efforts. Um, we had, the program was into two sessions. We had the daytime event, which was um, um, mostly hands-on activities and taking lectures on astronomy. And then we had the nighttime event, which was um, for stargazing. Uh, we had the, the school is a boarding school, so which meant the, the kids live in the hostel. So my team, we, we went back in the in the night to, to engage with them. We had um, stargazing, we had um, water rocketry. We did a lot of activities to um, drive home the, the point that we, we thought that they need astronomy, even in their STEM education. Nigeria, we don't have um, astronomy being taught in high school and elementary school. So most schools, most kids rely on activities of groups such as mine to, to be able to get understanding of what is going on. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, uh, Ola Yinke, and congratulations. Thank you. Great. Um, please continue to put uh, questions uh, in the chat, and we'll probably have some time to get to them actually at the end of the session. Our last presentation is by Bernard Samba. Bernard, are you online? Would you like to share your screen? Yes, okay, so maybe you can just stop sharing. Um, okay. So I'm trying to do that. Oh. Oh my, uh, sorry, um, wow. Uh, okay. Sorry, is this stop? Oh, sorry. 
Okay, brilliant. Thank you. All right. Uh, my name is Bernard, and I'll be talking about a project which is which has been partly funded by the Vision 2024 grant, which we call named Stars of Uganda. And this is under the Vision Infrastructure, acquiring small telescopes at universities. So the project Stars of Uganda is oops. Okay, the project Stars of Uganda is uh, designed to basically develop a national wide education and science communication program, which is aimed at using astronomy uh, to stimulate interest and motivate uh, students in high schools as well as universities uh, in order for them to pursue astronomy as careers or become basically uh, amateur astronomers, or anything related to that. So this is Im embedded in uh, a long-term project, uh, which is funded uh, from Switzerland. Uh, it's called Branko Weiss uh, Fellowship, Society in Science that is aimed at uh, not only using uh, astronomy, you know, to do science, basically uh, high level science, but also to use uh, astronomy to impact society. So the project Stars of Uganda perfectly fits in this. And the activities I'm going to, to highlight here are the first activities actually that we carried out during a summer school, which is the Sub-Saharan Africa Astronomy Summer School that took place last month. Uh, a couple of you actually attended. And the outreach part of, 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 of the school, we went to uh, a couple of high schools where we did uh, Galileo stop assembly. So students in these, uh, in these schools actually were seeing quite uh, large achromated uh, uh, objective lenses for the first time. So the level of curiosity was really, really high. They are seeing eyepiece lenses. And then we managed to put them in groups and just guided them through our, uh, you know, them assembling uh, the fast telescopes by themselves and trying to view objects that are far away, which was quite an exciting venture. Uh, here you can see one of my colleagues, um, Heike Priscilla in there, then there is Mariana somewhere in there, you know, discussing with other students. And the most important part actually under the vision 2024 that we embedded in this, in this program were, the quite larger telescopes now. We have now celestron uh, reflectors and as well as refractors. So we can use these to observe uh, some good celestial objects like certain, you know, a couple of planets, uh, some galaxies, which is a much more exciting uh, experience for most of the students and as well as people here that have not seen these objects or that will be seeing these objects for the first time. Again, here you see Professor James and, and Priscilla really mesmerized by the student reaction after looking through this telescope and seeing a farther, far away object that we had placed at really a distant, uh, you know, at a larger distance and they can see it for the first, uh, they can see it quite close. So the experience really was, was amazing and that can be captured in their facial expression. Uh, the other aspects that we have also embedded uh, in, in using these telescopes, uh, the university where um, it's called Chambogo University, it's in Uganda, and uh, they, we're actually trying to include astronomy into the curriculum. And uh, the first two uh, undergraduate projects that we decided to, to, to do here uh, involve using these telescopes. You know, we try to create interests uh, and the best way to do this is to allow students really look at these objects, telescope objects using this, uh, these telescopes and try to compare, say, uh, what a reflector and uh, a, a refractor would give you the quality of the image in terms of their focal length and try to do simple projects out of this. So these are the first uh, students that will be getting uh, that are doing projects in astronomy in this university, which I think is also amazing, one of the outputs uh, out of this. So thank you very much. Fantastic, thank you so much, Bernard. Um, I think everyone will agree with me that we have just seen such an amazing uh, variety of projects. And we've had presentations now from, um, you know, or short videos from all these projects that, that uh, have been supported by the Vision 2024 grant. And I just want to give you all a round of applause because uh, you guys are clearly doing amazing work. And uh, as Kevin said, this is already leaving a legacy for 2024 just through this work that you've been doing now. So huge congratulations. We have got five minutes for questions if anyone wants to raise something. 
or ask uh, questions to the presenters. Okay, we've got a few more videos. I'll just add those alongside. Um, thank you uh, for those. Uh, Raiz, would you like to go for it? Thanks so much. Um, I just wanted to ask the speaker from Nigeria, apologies, I don't remember the name, uh, about Astronomers Without Borders. How many countries on the continent have uh, some presence concerning Astronomers Without Borders? Uh, uh, just a general question. Thanks, I think that's probably a question for Oli Yenka, right? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, honestly, I do not know. I, I can't really say these are the numbers, but what I do know is that um, in Africa, we have like over 20 countries and then all over. So I would think they are close to pretty much 60 or 70. And the reason is because they allow individuals like myself to start Astronomers Without Borders in our countries and just um, affiliate to the, to the headquarters in the US. Brilliant, thanks, Anika. Any other questions? James, please go ahead. Yeah, I see Melvin is still around. Um, Melvin, I would like to know what is the future of data? What is the plan going forward? Do, is there going to be additional funding to do data three or is there any alternative plan for continuing this amazing project? Uh, thanks for that, uh, James. And that's the you know the one million dollar question. As we're always looking for more funding, um, so we have several avenues that we are pursuing at the moment to continue the funding. Um, yeah, but we just have to wait to uh, to see which ones are gonna gonna come to fruition. Um, and um, I'd just like to thank you for the the fantastic efforts with the uh, four element interferometer which is looking really good and uh yeah it's really great the uh, some of the dara students could participate in that and we look forward to you know making that available you know we'll certainly help in future efforts to to try and uh maybe help fund travel to get more people to come and get that hands-on experience which is as we've seen from many of the talks this morning an extremely valuable experience to really get that hands-on experience but the remote usage will also be really good. Um, yeah, we're making effort to get decent internet, uh, internet connectivity on the site. And whenever that happens, we'll be able to make the interferometer available for re remote usage from all over Africa, hopefully. Thanks, Melvin. Cheers. Thanks, Melvin. Thanks, James. Uh, any more questions? I think maybe I can just throw out uh, a suggestion or a request, actually. I think uh, besides putting these videos up and links to them, it would be uh, really nice to have, you know, a one paragraph or even more uh, blog post on each of these uh, Vision 2024 projects that we can link directly uh, to from our astronomy2024.org website. So if anybody's keen to volunteer to help us put those together, I think that would be highly appreciated. We really need to give these uh, projects some great visibility. Okay, any further questions? No, oh, there we go. Patrick, uh, you've got your hand up, would you like to ask? I think you're muted at the moment. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, good, a, a very good morning. I will want to know how one can become a member of the Astronomers Without Borders. I, I am in Ghana. And uh, this, to be frank, this is the first time I'm hearing of something like that. How do you become a member? Um, okay, Patrick, I, I think there's a website, if you just Google Astronomers Without Borders, you see it, and there is a, 
there's a way you can join as a member from anywhere from around the world. Okay. okay. Yes, all all right. You. All right. Thank you very much. Thank You're you. Welcome. Okay. Oh, Yinka, maybe you can put the um uh, the URL in the chat. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, Bonaventure, you've got a question. Yeah, I saw a link on the chat box where a, a program, uh, can you play that video so we can see two minutes or more or whatever it is. Can we just have a look at that project and see what it's all about? I think it's the vision 24 projects. On the link, you see a link for uh, uh, a project, the video. Can you see if you can click on it? Okay. Yeah. I think I got it. Is anything happening? Yes. He's not getting sound. Yeah, let me not, um, let's go and watch this, sorry. I'm struggling with the sound on the Dropbox, on the Dropbox link there, um, on Adventure. So let me try and get that um, ready for if we have a gap later on in the program, then we can play that, we'll come back to it. All right. Cool. Then the other thing, let's move on. We'll close the session on the Vision 2024 projects and we'll just uh, see if that video video comes in. Um, we also called for a for proposals for other kinds of projects that may be related to preparing the way for GA 2024. And so we had a submission there from uh, Michelle Gervaldi and colleagues. So Michelle, I'd like to invite you just to share your screen and uh, talk us through this idea on remote or robotic observing um, on the continent. Right, I'll give you okay. a warning when there's one minute left. Yes, I see. Good morning, everybody. I am um, Michel Germaldi, and I would like uh, to give you a short presentation on uh, how um, uh, we'll share the full screen. Sorry, so I need to close that. And to, okay, it should be. So I am uh, Michel Gerbaldi, and uh, this presentation is about uh, a suggestion to organize a meeting on remote and robotic observation, observing in Africa during the next General Assembly 2024 in Cape Town. In fact, it could be a meeting workshop during Saturday, which is the first weekend in the middle of the General Assembly, which is held from 5 to 16 August. Why that date? In fact, the date was suggested simply because it is not during the GA where there are many, many um, parallel session in so that it may be to have much more people attending this meeting. This meeting, the draft of this meeting done with Jean-Pierre de Grève is based, is based on the experience gained with Astrolab, which is an inquiry-based lab using remote robotic observations on free access. Remote and robotic observing contributes to reduce a lot the inequality in higher education as it offers universities with restricted budgets the possibility of sorry the possibility of having an hands-on tutorial without investments and equipment no cost provided there is a free access to remote and robotic telescopes for the students it offers a real active astrophysics experience from observations to 
the analysis of the data to obtain scientific results. And for universities, it offers a practical STEM tutorial requiring no expensive um, equipment for the engineering school, for example. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Sorry. You cannot hear me. I think we can hear you fine. Someone just accidentally unmuted themselves. Okay, so I will uh, do. Do you hear me? Yeah, Michelle, I can hear you fine. It's, uh, is it better now? Yes, Michelle, go ahead, no problem, we can hear you. Okay, okay, thank you. So You're I welcome. go back uh, the best way. So um, in this meeting, we suggest first to discuss, to have a great overview of the current situation. That is, what the educational goals are for, which robotic telescope use, which robotic telescope and their frequency of the use? What are the results obtained by the universities where such activities are carried out? What are the level of the student and the context of teaching? What is the level of tutors and instructors? And the training capacity will also be addressed. From this analysis of the current situation, that is from this inventory, in fact, the meeting determines what can be the future with a focus on the African continent. So the following point will be addressed. The important robotic remote networks available nowadays at university level. What are the possible projects at student, mainly first at the undergraduate level? What are the access to these remote and robotic telescopes? What is a way of delivering the data? We will discuss also reduction and analysis tools available, and of course, tutor training, which is an important point. And then we will conclude this meeting that day. What do we do now to discuss today and then the interest of such meeting? If there is a general agreement, detailed plans to be set up by colleagues already involved in teaching Astrolab with remote robotic telescope and with colleagues involved in observatories where such telescope or even radio telescope in remote mode are set up. In 2023, when, I don't know, introduction to the project to the GA 2024, to the organizers for approval. Thank you very much for listening. Perfect. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Michelle. Um, we could have any questions? Maybe one quick question on that. So maybe, uh, David, please go ahead. Yes, um, Michelle, I think it's an excellent idea. I'll just make the comment that it aligns quite nicely with a proposed focus meeting that uh, is being proposed during the IAU on small and medium-sized ground-based telescopes. So I think there's a, a definite potential synergy there. Yes, I saw it on the, uh, well, the list of the already uh, sent a focus meeting, and then uh, 1st of December, it will be a full application to be done. Um, the idea to have it on Saturday is simply because uh, as seen in Busan and as seen in many other uh, GA, um, the focus meetings are always, as any symposia, in parallel with the other activities of the GA. And so 
uh, in such a way only, uh, well, a small amount, let's say, of people can attend the focus meeting. So, um, well, maybe um, something could be already uh, started in such a focus meeting, but to have something on Saturday morning is simply because it will attract, it may attract much more interested people, interested colleagues who are trapped in the symposium related to their research. Thanks that very much, uh, Michelle. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I think there's one more question, but can we do that one in the chat, please? Um, and Michelle, will you also, um, you know, maybe put your contact details in the chat so that people who are interested can um, respond and then, you know, can yes. put something like this together? Yes, Great. definitely. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so now we're going to move on to um, an update from our team who's driving the science side of the organizing for 2024. So I'll hand over to uh, Bradley Frank, Bonita Deswatch, and David Bucky. Uh, hi, it's Brad here. I'm just gonna share my screen um, and then I'll present. Uh, can you guys see my screen in full screen mode? Yes, for sure. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Okay, okay thank you, Vanessa and uh, Charles and the organizers for the opportunity to give you an update on our activities. Uh, I'm, I'm giving the update on behalf of the uh, National Organizing Committee's Science Subcommittee, of which I'm the chair, the co-chair with, uh, with Bonita. Um, so last year we had uh, at, this, at this very meeting, at the forum, uh, our mandate was to assemble the SSC team, which, we, which I think we did successfully. And uh, this is the state of the team at the moment. So as I mentioned before, Benita and myself as co-chairs. And um, we assembled the team uh, with, with fairly good, I think fairly good representation across uh, our African partners. We did have a draft budget for science engagement and scholarships. Uh, and the idea which we tried as much to do over the past year, potentially not as successfully as we wanted to, was to be more involved with, with AFAS. Uh, and I think it's, it's important to focus on the two key mandates for the SSC was to, and was, was at a high level um, to promote enhanced leadership and participation in science programs at the General Assembly. Uh, to, and, and to consolidate science interests as much as is possible. Uh, and the second thing which we knew we, we needed to do and we could do was to uh, initiate a scholarship program that would lead into uh, the GA 2024. Uh, so over the past year and a bit, we have really been banging the drum about uh, African and South African involvement uh, in, in the symposia. Uh, that has led to the submission of, of uh, about 11, about a dozen um, letters of interest uh, for symposia to be held at the General Assembly 2024. Uh, so you'll see that these are 11 of the letters of interest. And what I've done here is I've highlighted uh, in bold the ones that have a, a good um, African involvement uh, or, or a, a large amount of African uh, um, leadership. Uh, and so I think it's I think it's fantastic to see that the majority of the symposia, which are really the sort of the core scientific activity of the General Assembly, the majority of them uh, have very good representation uh, from African partners. Um, so I think this speaks to uh, the success of a campaign to build ownership within the continent of the scientific program at the General Assembly. Uh, so. While there are about um, a, a, a few, well, there will be about, I think a maximum of seven to nine symposia at the uh, General Assembly. There will be many more focus meetings, which are short, but also directed towards very specific technical or scientific topics. Uh, 
So there are 20 uh, focus meetings that have been uh, proposed for the uh, General Assembly. Uh, and of those 20, about 80% of them uh, have uh, involvement from African researchers. And once again, many of them are, are led by African researchers, if not led by African researchers, but they definitely have um, a very strong representation in the scientific committees. So this is just sort of the seven or eight proposals that I could, I could paste in here. If I had to include all of them on the slide, it would honestly get, um, it would be too jumbled. The idea is just to give you an impression that the proposals for the focus meetings um, really span quite a, quite a large diversity in topics. So from uh, social topics that speak to the way that we engage with telescopes and the community development around astronomy to highly specific topics that focus on instrumentation, there is quite a, a substantial range of activities that are planned at the, uh, at the General Assembly. That leverage of the involvement and interests of science topics in, in the continent, um, but also the development of, of technical instrumentation that projects uh, across the continent as well. So I think this is really an indication that the General Assembly is our time to shine. It is. It really is a time to um, discuss the projects that are meaningful to us, but, but in addition to discuss and to lead projects that are essentially, um, you know, current, relevant, and interesting, and cutting edge uh, within the broader IAU community. And I think that's really what we're seeing here. Uh, and I really must alert the community uh, to, to, this, uh, to this fact that the final proposals are due on the 1st of December. Sorry, this is not 2022, 2024, it's 2022. Um, so th there's an interesting technicality that I think that many people may not be aware of that the letter of interest intent is, is not a prerequisite for a full, full proposal. So the letters of intent were due in September and, and that was where we got the, the 12 symposia and about 20 focus meeting proposals from, but there's still time to submit a proposal. So the, the purpose of the letter of intent is really just to um, create momentum and, and to create the awareness that this, this Group X wants to lead a symposium on this topic. Uh, but like I said, this is not a prerequisite for a full proposal. So if, if um, you see that there is an, um, a glaring omission in the program, in the proposed program, there definitely is time to submit, to several submit a proposal. And I urge you to contact us, um, either Charles, Vanessa, myself, Bonita, uh, if you, if you need any assistance in, in scoping out the amount of work that's involved um, and what the requirements for a proposal would be. So there definitely still is time. Uh, so again, please contact us if, if you're interested in submitting a proposal. Uh, in terms of the scholarships, so we have funding for two master scholarships will be hosted at a South African uh, institution from 2023 to 2024. So the idea is that the winners of these scholarships will attend the, the GA as, as you know, um, inheritors of the legacy of, uh, direct inheritors of the legacy of this, of the GA uh, activities. Um, so this, the eligibility is uh, for all um, uh, students, eligible students across Africa. Sorry, can I, can I just request if somebody is unmuted, please, please mute yourself because it's a bit distracting. Um, so we have, uh, so, so the eligibility is for all, uh, 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 suitably eligible African students across the continent. Uh, the deadline was extended to the 21st of October. Uh, very importantly, we weighed the requirement for a South African supervisor uh, involvement at the application stage. And the important thing is that we will contact potential supervisors for support. So we are, we are going to be busy with um, reviewing uh, these applications very intensely over the next uh, 10 days, the next two to three weeks. Um, the aim is for us to get a shortlist and then to start having interviews as soon as possible. And then of course we will make our offers. Um, and, the, and, and I think internally within South Africa, the aim is for us to find matching supervisors who are interested and, and keen on getting involved uh, in this amazing and excellent pro, uh, program. Uh, so, so please help us in supporting this program. Uh, this is, I think, a, a, 
again, a wonderful uh, way to further the legacy of uh, the, the activities leading up to the General Assembly. And we really rely on um, the contribution of the community in reviewing the, the applications, but also in supporting the students once they, once they have been shortlisted, once they have, been, uh, ex once, once they have received offers. Uh, so I really uh, appeal to the South African community in particular to help us uh, to make this program a success. Um, so future of the SSC. So as I mentioned on the, on the opening slide, there's, there's always been the intention and certainly uh, within our activities for there to be close cooperation between the science subcommittee and the AFAS Science Committee. Uh, and so I think given the close correspondence between uh, the Science Subcommittee and the Science and the AFAS Science Committee, uh, I think it's highly likely given, well, pro provided that we, we receive support from the AFAS executive and from the respective uh, committees themselves, that there will be a, um, a merger uh, of, of these two committees. Uh, it, I, perhaps merger is not the right word. I think it would be more a handing over of the baton to the AFA Science Co Committee, especially since the Science Committee has embedded in its terms of reference an explicit um, clause of support for the organization and activities around the GA 2024. Uh, and in particular, the AFAS, the, the, the AFAS is the the inheritor of the legacy. So we, the aim is for us to start thinking now about integration, start thinking right now about how we're going to hand this over. The idea is that while we have this wonderful event that's happening in 2024, we certainly do not want the momentum and the activities to, to halt and hit a roadblock after uh, the General Assembly. We want the momentum to keep going. We want those um, collaborations, those discussions, and the activity and excitement that's created at the General Assembly to continue living on beyond the General Assembly. Uh, and so the owner of that legacy is the African uh, Astronomical Society, and the aim is for us to start creating that, that lead in uh, over the next few months. Um, so, so I think our main activities over the next two, two months are going to be to finalize the scholarship program, uh, to make sure that we are uh, able to support the proposals for the symposia and focus meetings as much as possible. And I guess the third one is to ensure that we are able to hand over the legacy and the activities uh, over to the, uh, the, science, uh, the science committee um, as smoothly and as effectively as possible. Uh, so that's my, that's my, my spiel. Um, I think Vanessa, Charles, I'm not sure if you're going to hand over or if they're going to take questions now, but uh, yeah, it's up to you guys. Thank you. Thank you all for your attention. Thanks, Brad. Um, and for the rest of the uh, science committee, um, are there any questions immediately? Oh, so here's a question on the chat uh, by Gauri Sharma. Are logistics and infrastructure of the focus meetings financially supported by the GA? Uh, yes, so all of the local organizing is done by the National Organizing Committee. So there's, there's no need for a local organizing committee. Um, the, the, the venue, the programming, et cetera, they're all supported by, by, um, by the National Organizing Committee. Uh, and I guess that it really, the, the, the aim, so this, the, the scientific organizing committee of focus meetings, their, their main aim is to, first of all, submit a good proposal. And second of all, to set up the program and exactly how that program is going to be uh, uh, um, facilitated within the, 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 the broader program of the General Assembly, um, that's, that's, up to the, that's up to the organizers, essentially. James, I see your hand is up. Yes, Brad. Uh, thanks for the... Uh, very well. How are you? Good, thanks. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the update. Um, I just have one quick question. Do you have...
plans in place on how you would deal with significant delays that could be caused by um, SACWA verifications for the African students who would take up the MSc, as well as the delays, significant delays in the visa applications. So, um, this issue is now currently hitting yeah. many of the universities in South Africa, and of course, um, many of these uh, astronomical organizations who are trying to hire postdocs and bring in students from Absolutely. outside South Africa. Yeah. How do you plan to handle this? It's no longer trivial. It takes half a year, sometimes up to one year before you can sort these things out and get a student to South Africa. Uh, so, so, so James, I'm totally aware of the situation and I, I, it's, it's materially affected people who, who we want to, who, who are working at the observatory and we want to hire as well. So I would certainly try to, as much as possible, create as, as well, as long a window as possible for these students to be able to, to receive the appropriate um, certification uh, and, and their visa, given that this is going to affect everybody. And we want to lower barriers to entry. This is exactly why we, we delayed or we, um, we extended the deadline as well. Uh, so so I, think, I think we will try our best to provide as much uh, documentation and support, uh, even if it means us getting a letter from, from somebody at um, uh, the DSI or the NRF to, to help us smooth things along. That's, that's what we'll do. Uh, so, so I think we're, we're fortunate that within the science subcommittee, and I can't speak for, for other committees, fortunate that it's, the, it's only the case for, that we have two students or applicants that we have to support. Um, but we will, we will try to create as, as, as long a window as possible to ensure that they're able to, to, to get their paperwork sorted out. And we'll also try to, to lobby at the highest level possible. And I think that if there's any decision maker that's in the audience, I'll just protest and say that's reprehensible that it's taking that long for us to organize the, the, the relevant certifications um, for, for involvement, especially given the amount of growth activities that we have in, in South Africa. So, so we're definitely aware of it, James. We will do our best to accommodate uh, students. We want the best students to have the best opportunities um, and, and we're working on it. Um, so, yeah, we're all in the same boat and I hope we can, we can we'll be able to sort it out as, as efficiently as possible. Okay, maybe I'll just add a comment that it would be nice for you to also liaise with the, as soon as you are aware of which universities, the students that are selected yes. will be attending uh, to contact their international offices and then uh, yes. give them heads up on the progress. Um, yeah. Also to the organizing committee of the IAU, I'm not, I don't know if the visa uh, application period will change or things will change before then, but if it doesn't, then people need to start applying probably from next year to, to secure visa to come for IAU 2024. Um, we've had to leave out a lot of people on different programs we, we have organized in, in South Africa because the people were not issued visas either on time or yeah, so many other things that need to be. And yeah. I, I guess it affects everyone. It's not just people from African uh, countries. All right, thanks. Thanks, James. Uh, yeah, thanks, James. I think I think that's a great point, and I think that we will we will include that in our NOC deliberations. So, you know, it's either one or two things, right? So, number one, we 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 are trying our best to to lobby with decision makers, um, and number two, you know, if there are significant delays that that unfortunately we will have to live with, then we we must think about exactly how to time this so that to, so that we can ensure participation um, at at the general assembly. Uh, so, absolutely right. Uh, we, we are definitely aware of this. Um, and all I can say is that we're trying our best with different stakeholders to, to try to solve this problem out. All right, thank you. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to add one more thing, Vanessa. Uh, so, so, the, the, uh, so when, we, when we actually, when we eventually do uh, make our offer letters, uh, and I think as, as James is alluding, to uh, the organization uh, of the registration and the onboarding of the student 
we definitely rely on the local university partners to help us out there. Um, so there is, there is, you know, quite a lot of admin that's involved. Uh, these students definitely have to go to their relevant university international office uh, for assistance um, with fees, a visa, housing, etc. Um, and so, you know, there's a wonderful opportunity here for, to create visibility for your research program within the context of the scholarship program. So I think that's very important. And I think that in addition, the, if, you, if you're willing to support this, uh, uh, then we certainly hope that, that you have a support from your university department um, to help us out with the admin, because we know that that's a very important and often overlooked part of the onboarding process. Um, okay. So like I said before, we, we, we rely on, we, we, we really urge, sorry, sorry, Vanessa, we really urge and, and encourage the, the uh, community uh, to help us out with this. This is so, so, so important and such a great opportunity. Uh, and we're definitely there to assist. Um, but again, this must live in the community. So, um, uh, so please let us know if you're, if you're keen to, to help us out with this. Thanks. I think there's a couple um, of points that I also just want to focus attention on on this last slide of yours that's still showing, Brad. And I mean, the key thing here is that um, because going forward, as you've mentioned, oh. The activities of the um, science subcommittee of GA are really the same as the activities of the um, of the science committee of the African Astronomical Society. That um, there'll be a call for reconstituting these um, committees coming out either later today or first thing tomorrow. So do give some thought, everyone in the audience, you know, if this is something that you're passionate about and that you'd like to volunteer for, you know, then please do get in touch with uh, either Brad um, or David or anyone else from FS or the NOC and, um, and bear that in mind. That's right. So, so Vanessa, can I just ask quickly? So, this is not just for the science committee, right? This is for outreach, education, communications, and also the the early careers working group as well, right? Yeah. So, I think the outreach group will have their presentation next, and right. then yeah. So, I guess the point is that there's something for everybody, given their their interests, their 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 passions, uh, and their. Uh, you know, their, their, their aims of involvement and engagement over the next 18 months, whether it's be scientific, outreach, education, communications, or even from an early career perspective. If you have at all an inkling that, that you could add value and want to be involved at any level, uh, by all means, contact us uh, and we'll, we'll try our best to find a good foot for you. Great, thank you, Brad. I think... Um... We're now going to hand over to uh, David Buckley, um, just to, to share from the FS Science Committee. David, uh, I'll give you five minutes there before the next uh, talk. Thanks, Vanessa. Yeah, I just thought that I would um, quickly mention uh, one of the uh, flagship infrastructure projects within the AFAS. Um, we've heard already from uh, one of these, which is within what's called the African Radio Astronomy Network program within AFAS, uh, and namely that's the interferometer array that James um, gave a, a nice um, update on. Um, so I'm just going to quickly uh, remind you all about uh, the other um, uh, in uh, the other flagship project, um, which is called the African Integrated Observation System. Um, this was discussed, I guess, at the last AFAS meeting um, that we had this year. Uh, but uh, also we had um, a workshop on this in November last year. Um, you can see my slides, I presume, Vanessa. Yeah, perfectly. Good. So, I mean, the idea that AFAS has is um, within the science committee, we have a mandate to develop collaborations within Africa. Um, and one of the ideas that uh, sprung up was uh, having uh, linked facilities in the era of big survey data, including optical, transient, and time domain uh, astronomy, uh, astronomy. And these are sort of... Um, I guess, motivated by the big missions coming up in the next uh, decades. For example, the Rubin Observatory Legacy Survey for Space and Time and the SKA. 
in addition, it, it's partly to motivate and support for the develop, development of new facilities as well within Africa, um, and also support the whole HC, HCD um, program. So the idea is that we do essentially what has already started off here in South Africa uh, called a project called the Intelligent Observatory, which is linking all of our existing facilities together into uh, a more robotic or automated follow-up um, integrated system. And the idea is that this would be expanded uh, using the existing facilities within Africa. So. I've shown in this picture a number of existing telescopes throughout Africa, uh, and these would be logically the things that would be involved in, in such a network. Um, but it would also include new telescopes and even telescopes that we know have been built um, uh, at universities, you know, smaller scale telescopes. So we had a, a workshop last year um, where we reviewed uh, the whole program, and this is uh, just showing some of the, the talks that were presented, um, updates from our colleagues at the different observatories within Africa. Um, and so this is um, the plan, and um, one specific aspect of it right now, which is being discussed within the AFAS community, is to revive an existing telescope at the Hess site in Namibia called ROTC, which has essentially been uh, uh, decommissioned, but still available for potential use within this network. Uh, I won't go on about the details of this. Suffice to say that there is a, an amount of money set aside uh, by the AFAS uh, Science Committee to assist with this refurbishment. Uh, we also have um, uh, the possibility, well, uh, actually getting a camera from the South African Astronomical Observatory, and more recently discussions with the HESS collaboration in Namibia uh, has paved the way for them to provide us with the power and the internet connectivity um, for this telescope to remain uh, operating. So this may be the first facility that would be linked into the SAO's Intelligent Observatory um, project. Uh, and furthermore, I should mention that another telescope in Namibia, which is actually an operating telescope called ATOM, uh, supporting the HESS Observatory through optical observations, um, could also be part of this network. The HESS collaboration have been discussing that possibility to allow us to add it to the network. So oh, this is okay. just a... A quick update, and uh, that's that's all I um, I have to say about it. Thanks very much. Right. Well done. Thanks very much, uh, David. Brilliant. So, will you also put your contact details um, in the chat, and then people can get in touch if they're interested in this initiative? You mean my email? Yeah. Okay, brilliant. So that brings us to the end of the section on uh, science flagships and activities. Please do get in touch with uh, David or Brad if you've got any ideas there. And then I'll hand over to uh, Sally and Dudizile to talk a bit about um, the outreach uh, subcommittee and their activities. Thanks, Sally. Hey, thanks very much, uh, Vanessa. Um, Dudizile, can you please uh, share your screen?
Thanks, uh, thanks, Dede. We can, uh, well, I can at least see it uh, clear and uh, it's up and running on the, the screen at the moment. Okay, so uh, thank you all. Uh, this uh, next section is going to be on different uh, discussion of potential activities that uh, we are planning in our next steps um, for outreach education and communications committee. So as was briefly mentioned in Brad's talk, the, the uh, interests of both the um, outreach committee and the, um, for, the, for the GA 2024 and the um, AFAS uh, have aligned. So it was decided that they would merge together these uh, committees. So um, as you can see on the next slide, uh, go to the next slide, please. Did you? Um, we are now your, your co-chairs for both, uh, both of these committees. And uh, just as a brief introduction again to myself, I'm a uh, postdoc at the South African Astronomical Observatory. I'm also the chair of uh, NEC South Africa. Um, Dudu, can I introduce you, uh, yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Dudu Zile Kupeka. I'm working at the South African Astronomical Observatory with uh, on the BRICS Astronomy Projects. I'm also aligned with AFAS as well as the OET. Thank you. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks, Dudu. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so just uh, Vanessa gave a wonderful overview of the vision earlier. So I just thought I, we would just like recap some of the outreach uh, specific, outreach education uh, specific areas of the vision and basically explain why we're doing what we're doing and uh, maybe some of the goals that we are working towards. So one of the first areas is experience. And uh, this really addresses the why. We want to promote 2024 as well as the African astronomy awareness, um, both here in South Africa, in Africa, and in the rest of the world. And to create a shared pride amongst all Africans about some of the amazing research and, and work that we're busy doing. And uh, it's uh, even just watching those, those vision projects that we saw, those short videos, it's wonderful to see. And that already starts to create that sense of pride um, in what, what we're capable of. Um, so also we're looking at also multidisciplinary areas uh, so not just in scientists, we want to address, we want to work with artists, we want to work with all the sorts of different disciplines and see how we can work to develop astronomy and develop um, our achievements in Africa. Uh, looking at opportunities uh, we, that was mentioned uh, earlier, so it's not just opportunities for, for uh, Cape Town area, but also opportunities for Africa. How can we take these projects that you saw in the vision and expand them into the rest of uh, Africa as well as other projects. Uh, there's also uh, schools programs, so on the previous slide, as uh, well as uh, other areas. Uh, if you go back to the previous slide, and then just speaking about the legacy, I think one of the, the main things we're going to be working on is how to build a stronger network and uh, actually, this leads into the slide in any case. So, uh, Dudu, if you want to take us through some of our next steps. I'm so sorry, Sally. <laughs> I really don't know it's fine, I... we can go on. <laughs> okay. So, uh, just to continue from what Sally was mentioning, one of the biggest and most important things we are aiming for in this committee is building stronger networks with various organizations and people who are in the space mainly the science engagement space and astronomy outreach, education and communication space. So this will be on a national and international level. International would cover mostly Africa. So what we are showing you on the national level, we are also targeting the, the relevant stakeholders or the similar organizations and people in the rest of Africa. So for example, you'll see the NRF and you'll see SASTA, SAO and Sarau. Those are also organizations that are working in science outreach and science engagement where we plan to mobilize the entire community that is dealing with science engagement to also carry out these activities. 
the target audience is, is it's various groups, various groups of people. It would be the general public. We have students and high schools, primary schools, undergraduates, postgraduates, amateur astronomers, citizen scientists, professional astronomers, government officials, media, just anyone who would have an interest in astronomy. So this will also speak to the diversity of projects that we play and we plan to in, engage in. And then you'll see also with the IAU, we've got the Office of Astronomy for Outreach, as well as the Office of Astronomy for Education and the Office of Astronomy for Development. So our activities will be targeting all of those different uh, themes, which is development, education, outreach. And we plan to be as effective and sustainable as possible. These are on the next slide, we, you will see the examples of activities that we plan to have in the lead up to the GA. It is also very important to note that these activities are not limited to the ones that you see on screen. Because as I've mentioned previously, we want to work with as many people as possible who are interested in getting involved. So if there are many other activities that you have in mind, please do contact us and let us work together in achieving this goal. Who next up we will have Tiamiso who will speak on the OAE activities and she'll expand on how the OAE will be involved in this. And you'll see here other activities that we have planned. And we've just seen the presentation on Vision 2024 projects, and I've seen a lot of questions on how maybe those can be expanded. The plan is also to have those activities as flagship projects, which will then expand to the rest of Africa. We will, of course, engage with the coordinators of these Vision 2024 projects. And if they're interested, then we work together in ensuring that we replicate the similar activities across Africa. Staley will take over to speak about one of the planned activities for the GA. So this is another, um, thank you, Judy. Uh, this is another project that uh, will run in, in Cape Town, but also can be run in, hopefully can be simulate or replicated in other parts of Africa. And this is a, um, as you see in the image there, that's uh, taken from inside a dome. So concurrently to run during the two weeks with the um, IAU GA 2024, we're looking to have a um, astronomy festival that in this case will specifically take place inside uh, Ezekiel Planetarium, but also can be replicated throughout um, Africa and multiple planetaria around Africa. So also use um, also working to, to with other science centers and uh, observatories and facilities. So in this case, in uh, Zico's case, what we do is we potentially work with the science community to have multiple um, research uh, talks and visualization, data visualization talks that will be presented throughout the week and as part of uh, potential science programs. Um, also presented not only to researchers, but not only to the delegates from the, the conference, but also to the public. So really linking some of the current research and exciting research with the public and using this wonderful facility that we have as a, a that is the, the digital dome. Um, but uh, next slide, we'll go on to, uh, as uh, Dudu mentioned, we'll turn, uh, we'll pass over to Shia, who is Shiamisu, who is from the OAE office. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Tiamu Samakwela, and Sally, can you hear me? Yeah, all good. Okay. Um, so I am one of the astronomy education researchers at the OAE, uh, together with Saheed. Um, and I just want to um, share some of the goals of the OAE and how they lead with the activities that we are carrying out as the OAE. So one of the goals is to support uh, the professionalization of astronomy education. And this main goal is really to help astronomers, astronomy educators and teachers worldwide to gain the skills they need in order to communicate about astron astronomy effectively, especially for primary and secondary schools. And one of the ways that we are doing this right now is by having the Shaw IU workshop, which is happening this year on the 15th to the 17th of November, 
we will hear from different people who are already working in astronomy education, um, help us understand and find ways um, to actually also um, do astronomy education in our primary and secondary schools. Um, and we also want to make sure that uh, our educators and teachers find excellent resources. Um, but also in, in this way, we're also trying to build up resources from all parts of the world. So at the moment, we are running the glossary, which um, we are going to have translations of this glossary system. But at the moment, everybody can be involved in creating this glossary. So you can be involved as a reviewer, a teacher reviewer, while reading a definition from a teacher's perspective and read um, in a review from the astronomers where you read um, this um, definition that we have to make sure that we do not lose the science. So in order to make sure that we do not necessarily oversimplify the science, but be able to uh, effectively communicate the science. Um, and then another resource that we have is in the website of the Astro EDU, where we have a collection of activities that have been submitted and done around the world, but also uh, the Astro EDU has opportunities for people to submit their own activities onto the site and then share them um, with the others worldwide. Um, and then we also have um, another goal of ours is to support the inclusion of astronomy in curricula. So in many other curriculums, including um, in Africa, astronomy is not necessarily in the school curriculum, so it's not necessarily taught or in the context of South Africa, astronomy is in the curriculum, but it is not necessarily taught effectively. So at the moment, um, um, Sahid and I are both running research um, on this field where we are looking into ways that we can support astronomy education um, by actually knowing what's there in the curriculum and what's not in the curriculum. So one of the ways that um, you know some African astronomers and NICE can do is to just send us um, what they have in the astronomy curriculum in their schools if they have any to share that with us um, and also we are looking into student interest um, interest research where we are focusing on what is it that students are interested on especially with um, especially in astronomy focus on astronomy um, and then we will share the results of what students find most interesting and find ways in which we can introduce astronomy by working with what students actually find um, interesting. The other thing is to create, maintain and grow our network of associates, which is the National Astronomy Education Coordinators. You can go to the next slide and to share that in, um, in Africa currently we really have a very um, active NIAC community. And this NIAC community has also been involved in some of the things that we've been doing. So currently we have run the um, Teaching Teachers Pilot Program, TTP, and most of our projects um, that the OAE is funding from the TTP come from the African con uh, continent. So we are very um, happy that we have, you know, African NIACs who are already involved with the OAE and doing activities and initiatives with the OAE. The other one is the astrophotography, where we have also received um, some some nice and amazing pictures from the um, African continent um, that we can share on our website and also use in our classrooms for teaching. So um, this is the map of the African continent where we have NIACs everywhere where there's green, we have a NIAC and everywhere where there's green, there is no NIAC team. So you can always go into our website, nominate yourself or nominate someone who can join this community of NIACs and help us in reaching um, the goals for education. Thank you. Thank you very much, Simisu. Um, so that just gives you a flavor of uh, how we plan to work with the OAE. And likewise, we also plan to work with the OAO as well as uh, OAD. Um, so this, this slide, just because we are working with our, our committee for the IAUGA 2024 in particular, also includes the communication channels. This slide just talks a little bit about um, marketing and exposure, we, we've got all of these different uh, avenues. I really recommend you, you taking a look um, from our website, which has been posted. We've got email, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and those are being regularly updated. Also in um, connection or collaboration with Tourvest, which has been, which they've been doing a wonderful job there. Um, we will also be looking at press and multimedia, multimedia marketing, 
And that's just a, a small representation. But uh, of course, if you have any other ideas for ingenious methods or ways or unique ways, we can work with uh, the rest of the community and uh, market and promote African astronomy in the lead up to and during the GA. Of course, let us know. Over to you, Dudu. So as previously mentioned by Brad in the last talk, he mentioned the merger between the AFAS committee and the GA 2024 committees. And that's because of the synergies and the fact that there's actually one vision for both committees towards 2024. So there'll be a call that will be released for people to join the committees. And we like to ask you to please do respond to the call and join in in working with us on this vision. As Vanessa mentioned earlier, this vision does not belong to any one of us. It belongs to all of us. So if we could all put in the efforts to making this work in however way we think it would work in whatever ideas, if we come together and bring that together, then I'm sure we can make magic happen. And then the very last slide of our talk, which we've been emphasizing again, we need to hear from you. We need to work with you to find out what you want, how you'd, how you'd like to see us doing those activities for outreach, for education, for communication. So this is a discussion briefly, but I know some of you might not want to speak to us, so then you can type to us. Please go to menti.com and put in that code and just put in what you envision for this committee. Whoever is comfortable enough to speak, please raise your hand and we'll give you a platform to speak. But just sharing briefly of ideas, we will expand on it at a later stage. You can even share your contact details if you are interested and we'll definitely get in touch with you after this. Even if you are not in the committee itself, but if you'd like to contribute with certain activities or you have ideas of what you'd like the committee to, to do, then please do that as well. And we'll reach out, we will respond. So please uh, put in your inputs there. The code is on the screen. It's menti.com and the code is 2679. 3752. I'll also put the link on the chat. You can click on the link on the chat for ease of access. But we do need inputs from the whole community. I think we can all agree that when it comes to outreach, especially outreach, we need everyone's inputs in how we can best achieve vision 2024. You can see I posted something totally anonymous until I mentioned that it wasn't, was it, <laughs> was it? <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so I mean, maybe, maybe we can go, I can, in the meantime, while you're thinking about different ideas and then putting your, your email addresses down and everything, um, Another idea, of course, uh, we had is to get schools more engaged in the uh, General Assembly. Um, and uh, one idea in that respect is to have a school's uh, exact high, high school programs, there we go, um, uh, high school and, and uh, um, primary school to some degree, but mainly, I guess, with the GA uh, high school programs uh, in the lead up. To, so uh, focusing in the lead up to and during the, the two weeks of the conference itself as well. So really trying to get school children and the astronomers delegates attending the conference, maybe talking to each other in some respect and hosting um, workshops and uh, moving forward with that. Um, I see someone suggested teacher training, which is fantastic. Maybe uh, Shia, can you can you uh, speak to that because you've been working very closely with um, teachers training? Um, yeah, of course. Um, so currently, the teacher training that we we have developed as the OAE was um, trying to make sure that we build communities or like astronomy communities in schools. Um, so at the moment, you know, we do have astronomers, and then we have teachers and then we have people who are working in astronomy education which are 
in this case the Nayaks, but there hasn't always been some kind of relationship between the teachers and the astronomers and the Nayaks. And in our teaching um, teachers pilot program, we we made that um, a kind of a, one of the things that we they, that like the team needed to be an astronomer, a teacher and a Nayak who are working together in creating the program for teaching teachers, because it's not always that astronomers actually have the knowledge of teaching, and it's not always that teachers have the astronomy content. So you always need kind of both people, or all the three people working together in creating teaching um, teacher trainings that are actually going to be effective. And one of the things with the teacher training is that we know that, you know, one teacher is equals to about 35 children, right? So one teacher with 35 children teaching five classes. So 35 times five and teaching for how long? So teacher training, you know, can give us something that is more sustainable in terms of ensuring that we have good um, astronomy knowledge <laughs> imparted to the children. Thank you, Sheila. Uh, and some very, very important and uh, good points there. Uh, Vanessa, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, ask, actually, you know, this is great. I see you're getting lots of input now um, on this um, on this website. Um, will this stuff be collated and put into the vision document? Is that the idea? Do you? It will be collated, yes, and put into the vision document, particularly for this committee, so yes. Great, thanks. Great. Yeah, I, I also noticed, I mean, we've, we've got some wonderful ideas there, Slack and Discord communities, certainly. Um, so working with those um, as part of our communication channels and such. Uh, uh, and also um, innovative new approaches to activities using hybrid and online interactions. Uh, that's also, uh, we, we saw that, that brief talk during the vision projects. Um, that the great talk and uh, that's also something that we're looking at is is really how do we look at the data that's coming out of science in new ways um using things like uh virtual reality and augmented reality and digital domes for example so that's definitely something we're looking at and incorporating that into the ga space during the the conference and maybe having a sustainable um, effect in the future. So I think, uh, yeah, so so one of the ideas is, is having like a, a VR and an AR stand in the exhibition state space at the, the GA itself. But we're working on that. Okay. okay. I think we can <laughs> wrap. Oh, Matipa. Oh, Matipa. Matipa. Um, so I had a, a bit of a brainwave now. Uh, first of all, just a comment. Um, I think it's absolutely incredible how outreach education and communications committees just trying to bring all the stakeholders and collaborators together. I think that has been quite a challenge within the community and those spaces is actually finding a space for everyone to sort of interlink. Like it's kind of like all the different components kind of work in silos and obviously having that um, interlink between everyone really helps. Um, and so I think that's pretty awesome. That's just a comment from my side in terms of that. Um, and then on ideas of projects, um, my suggestion would be something like a traveling exhibition. Um, leading up to the GA. So this could obviously also then be something that could travel to schools, to um, science centers, to planetaria, to observatories, to wherever the engagement and outreach um, uh, um, activities would be kind of centered and focused. So um, the traveling ex exhibition could help. So it could be something like, um, a photography exhibition or a, 
history of astronomy in South Africa exhibition, you know, whatever the theme would be, but I suppose some sort of um, exhibition that would lead interest and sort of engage all the different um, organizations and communities and different publics because it will reach different people um, throughout the journey leading up to 2024. Some, Thank some you. One, <laughs> Thank you, Matipa. There's some wonderful ideas there, um, which we'll certainly uh, discuss further, especially, I mean, traveling exhibitions are something we've been trying to, to discuss uh, for, for years now, and hopefully we can work on that. Um, I think we're running out of time now, but uh, and we've got so many wonderful ideas. Dudu, can we keep this page open so that people can, throughout the day, maybe keep on posting ideas? Is that possible? Yeah, I think uh, if they can, uh, the link is in the chat, so they can just follow the link and this can be open throughout the day and they can just put in their inputs and we'll consolidate them at a later stage. And then I think Dudu mentioned it earlier, but we will um, issue out a, another email soon just to, to see if people are interested and uh, joining the committee and uh, moving forward with these and discussing these ideas and uh, in more detail. Thank you. Thank you, Sally and Lilile and Shemise. You guys are really um, the A team here. Hey? Thank you. So I encourage people to submit their, their things. Okay, we're almost at lunchtime. Um, I'm just going to hand over to Charles to make a few announcements before we break. Okay. Um, um, hi again, everyone. Um, so just a few announcements I'd just like to make. Um, as mentioned throughout the session, there will be um, this call for nominations for committee members that's going to go out. Um, we're hoping to send that out uh, by the end of today or tomorrow, um, just for you to just nom nominate yourself other people that you feel like could serve on the committees and actually make an impact and roll out these projects uh, leading to 2024 and, and beyond. Um, then um, there's the SALT workshop, which is taking place from the 14th to the 15th of November. Um, so this is just also just going to be well to also just give information about um, about SALT and and, 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 and the SAO and, and, and just how people can, 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 can also be able to use those, those instruments and, 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 and the facilities that are provided uh, by, by the SAO. Um, and, the, and then the next thing is the World Science Forum. So the African Astronomical Society and the OED uh, have submitted for a session which has now been approved at the World Science Forum, which is taking place in Cape Town uh, this year. So on the 6th of December, we are going to have a session at World Science Forum and um, everyone is, is welcome to, to, to register for, for that session. And we'll send out the information on how you can register to attend that session at World Science Forum and it's going to be a hybrid session. So it's can be attended both in person or virtually. Then there's the Middle East and African Regional IAU meeting, which is taking place on the 13th and 16th of February next year. Um, I think there's also been a, poll, a post in, or in, just in the chat with information how you can uh, register for that meeting. Um, and then of course the AFIS conference, which is next year, we've already sent out uh, save the date for this and we'll soon be sending out uh, the, the the call for abstracts and, and for registrations for you to participate in that meeting. It's taking place next year from the 13th to the 17th of March. And finally, last but not least, we've got this very exciting document, which is the Astronomy in Africa brochure. Um, so um, this, is, this is a brochure that just captures and summarizes astronomy on the African continent that we've already received some really great submissions uh, from, 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 from the community. So it's meant to be uh, uh, a living document and we will submit, to, we'll, we'll, we'll send you out to get information on how you can also add information about your activities and your observatories or facilities or any other work that you're doing to contribute towards astronomy on the continent so that you can just add on to that as well. Um, so now I think we have our break, which is an hour, right? Yeah. Yep, it's an hour, and then we'll be back here. So we'll see you all in Gather Town. Um, maybe we can have an early drink at the bar. Just kidding. <laughs> right, thanks.
Oh, okay. oh, and David put up his confidence. Don't go about that.
hard.
Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Um, welcome back. I uh, hope you had a, some time to get some lunch or take a break. So I think it's been. Um, I think we've had a really interesting morning of um, seeing what's happening in terms of um, the vision for 2024 and in terms of these projects. But I also just want to draw your attention to the fact that in less than a year from now, we will open the um, call for abstract for the science and focus meeting in 2024. And that will open around this time next year. And in fact, even before that, we will have a visit from the IAU delegation. And they will come in January next year to do a site visit um, of Cape Town and the CTIPC and the various facilities. So, and that's an opportunity to show them how far we are in terms of preparation and uh, building up to the General Assembly 2024. We're also in the process of finalizing the timelines. So these are timelines for, you know, opening the registration and making sure that uh, the grants can be evaluated alongside those registrations, making sure we have the right portals and tools in place for that. So it's suddenly not a distant thing anymore. The General Assembly is literally here now. So, um, so any action that we take now is, you know, going to be the only action that we'll be able to take. So I think with that sort of in the back of our minds and um, I'm providing some kind of incentive to act, I think let's take a walk through the vision document um, now and see where we are um, on that. So I'm just going to share my screen. Um, great, can people see that document or do I need to zoom in a bit? So I think as you can see, um, we can just go, sorry about the scrolling. We can go up to the top. <clears throat> so we've talked already about these various um, components to the vision document. And actually, whilst we've sent out the link and this Google Doc has been open for comment for, for about a year now, there have not been very many comments on it. And I think that's because you know, it seems like we've converged as a community on something on, on this vision, right? There are no huge gaps in it that people still need to fill. So I think let's just walk through it in terms of the key visions and who the stakeholders are, the potential stakeholders or the potential people to take action on those visions. And then after that, we'll think of uh, other ways that we can use to translate this vision into action. So in terms of people, what we're looking at here is a, a network African um, astronomy community who know each other and have greater visibility within the international community. We've got a number of key players there, mostly the African Astronomical Society, regional offices of the OAD, um, Space in Africa. We heard from them earlier today about how they're making that happen. And of course, the SAO Library, one specific aspect of that. The second part of people is looking at strong international collaborations, African astronomers well connected to astronomers worldwide. And can we do that through, for example, the facilities, both SKO and other local facilities within, within the continent, through universities, uh, through AFAS, through the European Astronomical Society, and through the Regional Offices of Astronomy for Development. And the third point here is this about uh, diverse representation at uh, division making levels both uh, nationally and broader than this so um, is it is it possible that we can have that kind of representation i think there's not been an obvious stakeholder for this yet so if you have any ideas of um of taking action here then please do get in touch we'll just add a comment here the, the document is open for comment students and early career researchers have got a clear path uh, a career path and guidance so there again, we've got some, some clear stakeholders, NASP, which is a South African program, we've got the PASEA, the Pan-African Group um, School, which has a mentoring group, and of course, the AFAS Science Committee. 
we have record of where students um, of astronomy end up. So this um, is addressed to some extent by the, the DARA and the DARA Big Data for their alumni, but of course can also be addressed on smaller scales, for example, through NAFT in South Africa, through Soreo, and through various uh, national astronomical associations on the continent. Then, um, sorry. Then in terms of number six, clearly communicated and abundant scholarship opportunities. Again, this has uh, come back to AFAS, to NASP. And uh, African astronomers having enough time to perform their research as opposed to being overloaded with teaching duties. So this is probably where there's more of an advocacy role. So AFAS can play some role, um, but of course, universities and teaching facilities have to provide other roles. And how can we, for example, um, bring in distance learning institutions and learn from um, the kind of scales that they manage. Still on the point about people, we have uh, sufficient high quality teaching capacity on the continent. So there we're looking at teaching at lots of different levels. We can use the Office of Astronomy Education's national uh, education contact. We can use Women in Astronomy Working Group of the IAU. IAU. And we can use PASEA in terms of transferable skills beyond astronomy. So here there are, are clear overlaps between facilities and observatories um, and some ideas around potentially at the African Union or University Department. Don't worry, not every, every uh, category in the vision document is quite as big as people. Number 10 is looking at building astronomy um, and engineering and instrumentation skills. So again, this goes back to some of the research facilities. So there are a number of research facilities across South Africa and across the, the world are listed here. Um, university VCs to cut across bureaucratic obstacles. Not clear that anybody um, made a lot of progress with that yet. Um, shall I just put this in the chat, the link to the Google Docs so that people can look at it, it only occurred to me now to do that. Okay. Um, okay. And then number 11 is looking at a networked astronomy, education, public outreach and development community with coordinated goals. So that really was the last presentation we had from Sally and Dibizili were talking a bit about that, including AFAS, um, the NIAC and the uh, Planetarium Association. And of course, uh, supporting all of this and really engaging with the public, we want a vibrant and networked amateur astronomy community. And so they're the role of people like uh, um, the Amateur Association, Astronomical um, Society of South Africa, FS, um, are important players. <laughs> So then in terms of infrastructure, what people have suggested in this document is um, good, reliable internet access at universities. I think it's not easy to see who, who potentially can lead on that because they have, have to be done in situ, but if you have any ideas, please suggest. Access to computing at universities, making competitive research and skills development possible. So there we have players like IDEA and the Center for High Performance Computing uh, that's in South Africa. So if there are other centers that we need to add to that list, please add them. Then we're also looking at small telescopes, um, providing infrastructure at universities for teaching. So that could be through Hartreo and, and Sereo, at SAO, at Northwest University, and the teaching telescopes at UCT. Again, these are all South African facilities. So if you have other um, facilities, or if there's a need to have other facilities, please add those. Access to remote observing. So I think we have here um, some specific people who've outlined various actions, um, including uh, also the IVOA. And of course, then today we've had uh, Michelle and, and JP's um, presentation on remote um, observing. So we can add that also as a point under there. In terms of um, Innovative use of mobile networks for training, education, and outreach. Again, here we can use um, this network of outreach and education contacts together with local universities. In terms of an African astronomical data archive, 
So again, nobody, no one central place, but for example, the Southern African Launch Telescope is either willing to contribute or to help support those efforts. So again, there's some clear um, places where effort is still needed um, to get towards this vision. And then we've also talked about an African Astronomy Heritage Archive, and there's some specific people named here. I think there's also a potential um, focus meeting around this suggested for 2024. So in terms of the science uh, goals, I think I don't need to go through these uh, already because the science, the science visions are just the ideas that we, many of us had um, at the forum last year for the type of science that we'd like to see happening at the General Assembly. And most of these ideas have actually been written up into letters of uh, interest and submitted to the IAU as potential symposia or focus meetings. And Brad's already gone through that list, so I'm not going to go through it again. Then in terms of opportunities for 2024, um, so these are some specific opportunities um, for people to get involved. So things that we thought about last year was this idea of ambassadors of astronomy for uh, ambassadors of astronomy in Africa, and that Atlas could potentially need <coughs> do something like that. Of course, in terms of student supervision, <coughs> so how can we make um, how can we provide more opportunities for supervision of um, students on the continent of Africa and could we do them through places like Santa Nass University faculty across the continent? Again, research collaborations here, that's an opportunity. But again, um, it's not easy to see a central coordinating body when a lot of these have to be um, coordinated dependent on personalities and institutional collaborations and scientific direction. But if you have ideas, that would be great to see them in there. Policy and decision maker engagement. So we've got a lot of tools for these at the moment, these are going, and some specific names, but also some. Um, advocacy groups like ERA and the African Astronomical Society. Looking at opportunities with industry partners, we have opportunities with many alumni that have graduated from astronomy programs that are now working in industry. Can we um, use those kinds of relationships to catalyze better um, with industry? Education, outreach and development. So there's opportunities plenty there around the traveling telescope and through the many bodies um, of the IAU that supports education, outreach, and development. In terms of schools, this is something that uh, Sally and Duduzile also addressed. So, a more formal program for schools in the General Assembly that's already been discussed. Then, of course, this idea of uh, volunteers. So, um, we need there are many opportunities for volunteers, and we'll need volunteers from across. Um, the continent, because of course, in some parts of the continent, the General Assembly falls right in the middle of the teaching semester. So that's something to, to bear in mind. In terms of um, side meetings and trips, this is also something that was highlighted in Tembi's presentation today, using the opportunity um, for people to travel beyond just Cape Town for the General Assembly, but um, also within South Africa and within the rest of the continent. So, I mean, we've already got to one uh, stakeholder there. If you've got interest in, in hosting visitors, then it might be worth uh, adding your institution there. And of course, we've talked a bit today about hybrid conferencing and how we can innovate on the, um, on the uptake of hybrid conferencing platforms. In terms of experience, what do we want people to experience when they participate in the GA? Um, so we really want the sense of shared pride um, among all Africans for hosting this, um, for hosting the, the world. And I think we're already halfway there. I mean, we could just see the amazing turnout and support that uh, Takanani and Sally mentioned at the uh, meeting in Busan. If we want to have the opportunity for visitors to experience tours of, of African astronomy for facilities, so not just uh, the usual sort of tourist tours but to have an opportunity also to do a bit of that kind of scientific tourism 
So again, we've got a number of people who've put names of specific uh, agencies or companies down here. Please feel free to add. Astrotourism, again, there's a whole bunch of ideas around uh, astrotourism and how we can use uh, the GA to generate that. And of course, we also want people to experience ethical, scientific and technological prowess. So we want to be engaging in professional bodies within South Africa, um, highlighting the General Assembly and the work that they do. So diverse faces of Team Africa, that's partly represented by the National Organizing Committee, but there's a much larger group behind um, than just the National Organizing Committee. We want people to experience a sense of an African GA, and there again, we'll be engaging, you know, with the, both our professional conference organizers and with the broader community um, to make sure we achieve that. And that's, that goes to point number seven as well. Of course, we want people to experience immaculate and efficient uh, organization of a, a large meeting. Again, here we've come back to innovative ways of conferencing is also um, something that we want people to experience whether they experience doing it in a hybrid um, or virtual way or in person. And of course, I think something we want to, um, we want to achieve is to allow visitors to understand some of the development challenges that we face both within South Africa and more broadly across the continent, and to try and engage people in thinking about ways that they can participate in some of these uh, big challenges. We also want to show the strong political support that we have for astronomy, both in South Africa and across the continent. So we've got a couple of uh, key stakeholders there, and it may be worth adding more and beginning to engage with them. I know there's been a fair amount of engagement also with the African uh, Union, so it would be good to continue that in the next two years. <laughs> and then in terms of multidisciplinary participation, it may be an option um, to broaden the scope of GAs for multidisciplinary um, participation. So I think here's somewhere that uh, ideas maybe need to become more, um, uh, what's it, concrete, so that we can have some stakeholders around that. Multilingual participation. Yes, of course, conferences are normally conducted in English. And is there a way that we can engage with relevant groups to explore um, having a more multilingual conference? And of course, we want people to experience really Africa as the cradle of humankind. So, um, and of course, present maybe as part of trips all of the things that we have to offer in that regard. So again, that's a lot of engagement beyond just beyond just Cape Town, right? So then, I'm not as good at going through, as going through these uh, things, but Kevin is normally does this like mammoth session of going through this document. I actually have a sip of water halfway through. Actually, maybe I'll stop here for a moment and just ask if there's any immediate questions or any immediate comments that people want to make. I mean, you can also make the comments uh, directly on the document. Okay, no, my voice has lulled you to sleep. Right, so in terms of organizing, there's a couple of key things that need to put into place. Some of these have already been achieved in terms of organizing structure. We've got that set up. And as various people rotate on and off the organizing um, structure, then we have more people to, um, to take on those roles as needed. We have this uh, advisory um, structure through our stakeholder meetings. We now have the support of a professional conference organizer. A standing agenda item until 2024, it's not clear we have that, but every now and again we do um, bring this up at the various forums as we attend. And then something that we also want to add in terms of this organizing is accessibility. <coughs> In terms of funding 2024, this is also not, uh, this is something where we haven't really progressed a huge amount. So for example, looking at diverse sources of funding, there's lots of ideas around this, but who are the people that we mobilize um, to get those kinds of diverse funding sources? In terms of government um, buy-in and sponsorship, these are things that we need ahead of time so that we can make sure that delegates are well supported to attend. And of course, private sector funding, how do we access those kinds of things? 
high profile individuals? Um, are there unique ways of raising funding so we can really broaden the scope of people who can attend this meeting and leave it a huge legacy? And of course, these are all things like innovative fundraising. So you can see there's a lot of uh, empty gaps in this particular section. And that's something that's going to need a huge amount of work um, in the next two years. So then we move on to the section of, of legacy. What kind of legacy will we hope this creates? And, um, and of course, what's really important, I think, here is to bear in mind that the African Astronomical Society, which was uh, revitalized in 2019, would really be the custodian of the kind of legacy that will come out of um, the General Assembly. So the fact is that you know, many of these initiatives will start for the General Assembly and will hopefully find a home uh, within the African Astronomical Society. So that's looking at transformation of the astronomy community, transformation of the way meetings are done, um, a place to come for collaborations and finding new collaborators, uh, greater unity in astronomy across Africa, and supporting each other where various pockets of astronomy grow in terms of sharing expertise, looking at things like outreach, um, education, development, flagships, and of course, some of the science flagship projects, of course, these can be done within the, um, within the purview of the African Astronomical Society, even though the funding for them might be generated outside of, of that fund, funding mechanism. Looking at the potential of having things like astronomy hubs across Africa, so something maybe similar to mass node, either for teaching or for research schools. And then, of course, looking at uh, diversity, greater African representation um, at the IAU. So, how many of uh, how many African countries will join the IAU as members at the next 2024 held in Africa? So, those are areas where we already need to start uh, engaging with um, with our communities and putting those applications in. Yeah, and then of course there are these other two issues that I've raised earlier this morning around a more sustainable uh, field of astronomy and around uh, bringing people to Africa as a destination for talent and investment. And those don't have potential stakeholders now, so again, these are really uh, open for for your suggestions. Okay, that's forty pages done. Sure. So I think what's nice about this is that we have a fairly robust uh, vision document here. It's gone through two major iterations, but in the last year, there haven't been a huge number of changes. There have been a couple of suggestions here, and there's opportunity for more suggestions, but I don't think that just of it is going to change much now. So what's already started happening and what has to continue in the next two years is, is moving this document from a vision into an action. And parts of this have already started through the work of the African Astronomical Society, through the work of the number of, of the Vision 2024 projects that you heard about this morning. And this work um, in translating this into action aligns really strongly with the goals of the African Astronomical Society. And so this is an opportunity, I think, for, um, for us to think about uh, reconstituting the committees that drive um, the science vision here specifically and the uh, education outreach opportunities around um, Vision 2024 to align very strongly with uh, the African Astronomical Society. So I'm going to hand over to Charles now because um, as the head of secretariat as the African Astronomical Society, he's wearing two hats in this meeting. You know, one is, of course, as the co-chair of the NOC, but the other is this head of secretariat uh, hat. And he's going to tell us a bit more about uh, how he sees these um, the reconstitution of the committees um, of the African Astronomical Society. So um, let me stop my share here. And mute myself off the boat, Charles. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Vanessa, for taking us through the, the vision document. I think it's very important for us to reflect as on uh, as well on on how far we have we have we have come. Um, 
So what I'm going to do as well, I don't know if you can see my screen. Okay, yeah, okay. My screen here, what I have are the terms of references of the committee, and I'll just say exactly why I have these here. So as Vanessa mentioned, um, most of of these items that are on this vision document are closely aligned to the work of APHIS and, 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 and some of the things that we've been working towards. And um, this year, even before this year, we have been sort of working together towards making progress on, 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 on the items mentioned in in the vision document and that sort of also got us talking again as to say we have got the the, the committees which are the the science and outreach committees which are working towards the same goal for the ga 2024 and for AFIS. why don't we bring these together to sort of uh come together and 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 work towards um these goals and this and 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 and, 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 and this vision as 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 one unit so that got us as APHIS to go back and look at the terms of reference of the committees that we have. Um, these particularly are the, are the science and outreach uh, committees of, of, of APHIS. And um, we have now been uh, reviewing the terms of references of, 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 of this committee. And what we want to do here today is just to have a look at the terms of reference of, of, of this committee with, with, with everyone that's present here today. And also just uh, maybe you can, we, we, we can even share with you so that you can, can also give your input on, on, on these, on these, um, on these, uh, on the, on the duties and the roles of responsibility of, 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 of the committee. So the first committee, terms of reference I'm going to go through now is is that of 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 the of the of the of, of the outreach committee and um of course it gives sort of a background as to what the role of of of, of the outreach committee is so the the the, the outreach committee of the African society is currently chaired by 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 Niruj who's also been working on the GA 2024 and also with Brazil and Sally as well um and so in this terms of reference, you'll see that we've got what the, st the, the strategic objectives of the committee is, and to look at supporting and enhancing existing astronomy activities or content, establishing and coordinating networks, and 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 and, and also increasing the science and astronomy literacy across the continent, creating um, reliable ex and reliable resources, uh, which is something that 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 that, that, that if and his committees has, has also already been doing, and also promoting astronomy in African countries um, that have very little or, 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 or no activities uh, happening. Um, and, and, and just to continue scaling to the document, just going to the, the, the terms of reference, look at what the duties are for this uh, for 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 this committee, and also looking at implementing uh the 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 the, the various outreach project um encouraging practitioners and and and, and also in, in encouraging the people that are already involved in working in the outreach space and 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 and, and, and so on so what the, the reason we are we are we are bringing this also to this committee so that when we do release the call for 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 for, for the committee members it's just that um you all can give the input as the community as to what you want this committee to do or what you what you want these committees to do right and and and, and so that your voice is, is 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 also heard through these these committees and the work that they do and when you do go through the document you will you'll, you'll 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 also find the the what what the you'll, you'll also find the technical details of of the committee and how it, it it it's held accountable for all the work that it does in 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 whichever form that it is. So you so you look at the composition, the and and, and how regular the committee is meeting and sort of how the minutes and and, and all of these things are, are 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 kept so that um we can be accountable to 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 you as 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 the community. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just put the link to the terms of reference for the for the outreach committee in in the, in the chat so that you can also start having a look at them and, and maybe even giving comments um, where where you can and i'll just also quickly open the science committee in terms of reference i think that we've we 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 we, we, we we've heard uh the talks this morning from from the various committee chairs both science and and and, and outreach and the sort of activities that 
that they've been doing. So this is also an, an opportunity for, 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 for us as, as a community to have our say as to what these committees are doing on 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 our behalf and, and and also for us to be more part of the sort of things that they're doing as well so these are just some of the strategic objectives of the science committee and we are also hoping that you'd give further input into into sort of realizing the 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 the, the science vision part of 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 the vision document um, through this yep so thanks so um, what we're going to do now is um, we 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 want to go into into a into sort of a discussion as well, sort of to get input from you as 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 a community in terms of the science and outreach, the direction, even looking at these um, at these at these terms of reference to say um, to, to 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 sort of say what are the sort of things that. Um, we 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 actually want to see happening. So we'll we'll we'll, we'll shortly move into um, breakout rooms, and I think that Vanessa just wants to come in quickly and just um, add on to what I've just said, Vanessa. Yeah, thank you, Charles. So, I mean, I know Charles has explained already that this is an opportunity for all of us to to have input into what the terms of reference is like for these committees, and because we um, because AFAS is trying to reconstitute the committees, but maybe just to give some background, you know, the um, the NOC um, Science and Outreach Committees uh, have been working, you know, consistently for the last probably two years, but we find that there's a large overlap in the membership between the committee at AFAS and the committee that's part of the NOC, and of course it doesn't really make sense for the same people to be doing the same work, but in slightly different committees. So this is really a way of streamlining it and making sure that um, you know we align the goals of the GA 2024 with AFAS at least for the next three years, um, and then of course so uh, I guess the AFAS will um, take the lead in the direction after that. So I think that that's all I wanted to point out, Charles, and maybe just to we could both pause for a moment and ask uh, if anybody had anything to. Ask or add. Okay, do we have any questions? Comments? Does anyone want to? Okay, all right. Um, I think what we what we can do now we can so if you if you look at your Zoom where it says um, breakout rooms at at the bottom of your of your of, of your screen you'll see that we've got science uh, discussions and we gave the other one on education and outreach uh, discussions. So um, just when the chair of the session just Vanessa give us the green light on saying that we can go into those breakout rooms and maybe give us also a guideline as to what we're going to be looking at in those breakout rooms, then we can just move on to that. So I think uh, the idea is to have a sort of a smaller group and those, um, you know, so just go into the science or the outreach breakout rooms, have a look at the terms of reference and use that opportunity, you know, to ask questions uh, either to the, I'll be in the, in the science room representing the science committee, um, Dudazile and Sally will be in the outreach room. Um, it's just an opportunity to work in a smaller group, asking specific questions, and you know, seeing if um, if there are any particular terms here that we need to tweak before we open this committee, we constitute uh, the committees. I think we'll just take fifteen minutes to do that. Um, I don't think it should take longer than that. So that's the green light, that's the official green light to enter one of those breakout rooms. What time should we get back here, Vanessa or Charles? So I think about quarter two, just after quarter two, 10 to, let's make it 10 to three. Oh, all right.
please, Vanessa, how we can join uh, the other rooms? Well, so so you just scroll or click where it has your three dots and then it says breakout rooms and then you can select which breakout room you want to go into so you will select either uh science or outreach and and and, and education if you if you if you can't or, or having difficulties you can just let me know and then i will i will assign you to a to a breakout room so you can just let me know between Okay, now we have uh, two two rooms: uh, science or out uh, out education. Okay, thank you. Right. Okay, thank you. Okay, so you can start joining whichever uh, breakout room you want to, whether the science or the outreach. So just click where it says breakout rooms and then select the, the room of your choice. And if you are not sure on how to do that, you can just let me know and then I'll, uh, and then I'll assign you to any one of them. Well, I think I have to be in the science committee. All right. Is that you, Bonaventure? Man, should I put you in the science committee? Yeah. Okay. All right. I was saying you took science. Um, who else was the one to be assigned? Um, Nalini, um, would you? I mean, you, 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 you could go into either one, and then you, you, and then you can just move around the two. So, should I assign you to the science first, and then you move out from there? Bernie, do you have a, a preference as to which breakout room you want to go into? Abdul Majid. Sorry. Now, I'm just asking if you would like to go into which breakout room, the science or the outreach? I think outreach. I hope that. Uh... Okay, I'll put you in the outreach. Yeah. Thank you. All right, Benhira, you, you can just go into, into the outreach room. I've, I've assigned you to it, so yeah. you should be uh, able to.
Right. Okay. Um, thanks, everyone. Um, I was actually listening in on 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 both sides, and there were some good discussions that were taking place in 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 both rooms. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand over first to Dudu to sort of give an idea of what the discussions um, in the in the outreach breakaway room were around. And then after that, Vanessa, I can give an update from the slide discussions. Hi again, everyone. So we're back from the outreach <laughs> group. We realized that there are very few people in this whole meeting interested in outreach activities. Or oh, I don't know, maybe it was a matter of priority right now. But anyway, then there were, we first of all, we feel like there was not enough time for us to continue with our discussions. So we will definitely be meeting, having another meeting with the community just on outreach activities and we'll assign action points to everyone. But the main points that were raised was we need to identify key stakeholders in each area of or in each objective that we have, identify this these key stakeholders, approach them and get them involved in the activities we are doing. And then there was also an emphasis on getting together the knocks and the nikes in, in, in our way of reaching, having a larger reach, a wider reach, because the, the committee itself or the NOC itself cannot be able to reach every place. That's why it's important that we build a really strong network of people who want to do this work and will reach out to other parts of Africa. So we will again involve the NOCs and the NICs and have a meeting with them to work on a strategy on how we can get this done. And then there was also another suggestion of increasing our efforts when it comes to communication because we realized that we are doing this work, we are meeting today, but there are many people out there who are implementers of these activities, who are working in science engagement or astronomy engagement and outreach work, but who are not aware of this part because maybe it's because it's astronomy or they just don't know about the meeting. So we need to increase our efforts in communication so that we can reach a wider audience. There's a suggestion of even having WhatsApp groups or mailing lists with these various people to keep them connected just to keep them updated about everything that we are doing. And then there was another very important point that was raised that the, in order for us to actually be able to have effective projects that will reach wider people, there is a need for basic instrumentation. Because some of these projects will be run in areas where there's probably no observatory or there's no planetarium or there's no other equipment. But if we can be able to have instrumentation that we either travel with or that is sponsored to these various projects so that people can be able to use these instruments to actually view the skies and, and get involved in the work that we are doing. So that was a very important point that was raised. So we will probably need to partner with other right to sponsors to get sponsorships on getting these telescopes or these instruments that can be used, but there is a need for that. And I think this more than anything, it emphasized the need for us to not work in a niche or not work in silos. We might be working in astronomy, but we do need other sectors who might be interested in providing the support and help that we might need. But yeah, those are the main points that were raised. We will definitely be meeting again and will continuously update the vision document and work on clearer action plans. I think what we're going to work on from now onwards is having clear timelines of when this project is being worked on and the due date. So it's easier to track our progress and that everyone can feel we are really moving forward with the activities. But thank you. You can continue, Chair. Right. Thanks. Um, I don't know. Before we, we, we move on, we will move on to Vanessa. Maybe someone was not in the session and has a question for 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 the outreach group. Uh, Patricia, I see you got your hand up. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. That that's interesting and all good points. I just like to remind you, if you can go to places where you have internet access, then virtual observatory tools, if you know how to use them give you access to all the astronomy databases all over the world, those in, well, most of the astronomy databases all over the world, those in the United States, including NASA, the ESO, including the Gaia data, 
Australian data and of course, South African data. Uh, and with those tools and some education examples, you can uh, essentially do research uh, using, using the internet, using computer uh, devices. And there's a wonderful opportunity to, to, to uh, take more effort developing uh, exercises for, for students at all level, at school level, uh, and at university level. I, I mean, obviously this is not the time to go into that in great detail, but there are opportunities there and it can be very exciting for young people to actually work on images from the James Webb Space Telescope, for example, uh, and make their own measurements in their school or their university. You do need skills, but the tools, the tools are there and it's possible. Thank, Thank you. you for that patricia yes that's that's very true and in areas where there is internet connection that is very much possible and the you know the possibilities are endless but when we also consider areas where there's no internet connection and we are trying to be as inclusive as possible in in our efforts so what we're trying to do is tailor make or tailor design these projects to fit the needs of each community that we reach so if we get to an area where they do have internet connection, then it's great. We have many options. But in certain areas where there's no internet connections and there's no, no resources and we want to have a sustainable project, we might need to go the extra mile and actually provide those resources that the community can stay with behind to be able to continue doing these projects even when we are gone. So we will explore all of these options, but we, we need to be as inclusive as possible and yes i, I understand you're quite right approach in, in, in our activities but thank you so much yeah but maybe also just the point that patricia raised about virtual uh, access and virtual observatories maybe um as we build up this database of 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 of, of tools patricia you'd be someone that we could speak to about um uh, including the 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 links for 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 where people can access these 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 tools, yeah. I'd be happy to help. I'm not an expert, but I know people who are, and I can I can get what you need from them. Certainly. All right, that's great, Patricia. Thanks. Okay, um, definitely then... contact you, Patricia. Please, I'll I'll yeah. send you an email after this. Thank you. Right. Thank you, David. You have your hand up. Um. Yes, Charles. Yeah, just a comment uh, following up on what Patricia said about virtual observatory tools. I think it's a great idea. Um, as you know, there's lots of capacity building workshops that are happening throughout Africa. And I would just say that it would be really quite good to make sure that in these we might include uh, inviting people who can demonstrate or help tutor in the usage of those tools. Um, so, yeah, that was just an idea. I'd be interested to hear what Patricia's viewpoint on that possibility might be. Sounds good to me, David. I'm I'm sure there'd be people who would be interested. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, I think I think even earlier this year we we did have one such session at the APES conference, which was led by by Khadija, um, which was looking at virtual observatory tools. Maybe we can look at organizing more of those again uh, for, for the benefit of the community. I think now we can hand over to Vanessa and then she can just give us a brief from the discussions from the science group. Yeah, so I think the discussion of the science group is far less brainstorming and far more arm twisting than was happening in the, uh, in the outreach uh, group. So I think uh, our discussion centered a bit about what would be involved in um, representing the FS Science Committee. Um, you know, our current members of the committee staying on, why is there a fall anyway? So there was this discussion about uh, refreshing the committee. Some members wanted to uh, step down and give others a chance. Some were too busy to continue with the task. And then I think we also clarified some points around uh, who you know who would be eligible for membership so you needed to be African but not necessarily based in Africa even Africans who are based abroad as long as they're members of the African Astronomical Society um, could participate uh, could represent this community and then finally um, we talked a bit about maybe going through the current list of 
uh, FS members and actually, you know, emailing a couple of targeted individuals um, who we think would be good in this leadership leadership role and then encouraging them to um, to apply to the science committee or to nominate themselves um, or asking if we could nominate them uh, when the call opens. So did I forget um, anything specific? Uh, people are welcome to correct me or we'll make any additional comments. Okay, so no one from the outreach side want to ask anything to the science guys about the discussions. Okay, um, I think then if there are no questions, then Vanessa, you can now take off your your hat that you've been wearing as as, as the representative from the science session or the breakout room, and you can have your NOC hat on and just tell us where we are and uh, where we're going next. Oh, like that's for me to decide, but <laughs> no, I think maybe I'll just come back to the sort of points that we raised this morning. We've, we've been through the vision document. We've chatted a bit about how to uh, translate this vision into action now. Um, and so I think what we want to do is to both translate it into action through membership of these committees and um, looking after the goals of the um, GA 2024, Vision 2024, and the goals of FS. But I think more than that, we also want to um, track, you know, how we have uh, action that the progress so far on Vision 2024. So I think this is really where we can see ourselves going for the next year. Um, we think there's probably not a huge amount missing from Vision 2024, except probably some key people to take uh, on the actions. And then how do we move, you know, how do we continue this momentum of translating that vision into action? Um, for example, do we think that we would as the broader community benefit from another call for uh, vision 2024 proposals where we could action some of these other items? Or um, do we think it's time to, um, you know, put resources, uh, time or, or financial resources into tracking some of the progress uh, on Vision 2024 um, in a more, you know, in a different way than we sort of are tracking it at the moment, which is very much sort of looking through the list and um, seeing these video and, and, and other reports. So I think I just want to open the floor to, to people and to, to ask if anyone has, uh, ideas around that, you know, for the next year when we will actually be able to think about more than just the logistics of this meeting. Um, what are those key things that we want to focus on? So, uh, Bernie, it's really great uh, to have you here. I was just uh, wondering if you'd followed any of this discussion and, you know, you have got so much expertise and wisdom. Um, what do you think in terms of where we're going? Maybe there's a couple of people here as well, like uh, I see our representatives from SKAO. Uh, any inputs from those sides? Hi, Vanessa um, and colleagues. Lita Vele here from SKAO. Um, <clears throat> Vanessa, this is a big learning curve for me, as you know. Um, so I am listening to everything and gathering thoughts, and I should be able to comment as we go along. So for now, I will participate by listening as much as possible. But certainly we want to be a part of this whole process, obviously. No, that's uh, fantastic, Leta Bella. And just to mention to colleagues who have um, not met you yet, uh, Leta Bella is the new communications manager, are you, for... Um... That's correct, yeah, for SKO um, in South Africa. So I deal with the SKA mid-frequency telescope, which is being built in the Karoo. 
Yeah, fantastic. So I think it will also be a, a really valuable resource for the teams here as they, you know, moving to act on some of these outreach education, you know, science engagement initiatives. Absolutely. Thank you for saying hello. Hi. <laughs> Anybody else uh, want to just throw up something? Throw out an idea, you know, how we move, uh, how we sustain this action. So nobody as yet uh, has made any comment on the idea of offering another round of Vision 2024 proposals. So we, if that's something that would appeal to people have projects in mind. Yes, uh, Zach Zacharia, go ahead. Yes, uh, Vanessa, thank you. Uh, just, uh, <clears throat> I write a training teacher. We had a small experience uh, in Morocco to organize uh, uh, maybe a Galileo training teacher for, for teachers in Morocco. Maybe it will be a great idea to, to share it with uh, other uh, countries across Africa. We can uh, we can have a meeting uh, maybe with Nyax or from Africa to discuss what to, what we can do uh, together, and uh, and give some 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 uh, teacher training. Maybe we can uh, we can do it or uh, by region or uh, if the distance it will be a problem we can give a training for uh, north africa and the other for west africa and maybe we can uh, we can uh, have a solution to this uh, this problem of distance or maybe language or something like that oh, that sounds uh, great uh, zakaria so uh, i think um is your suggestion that you would, you know, be able to use a new call for proposals, or is it something that's just, you know, you suggesting anyway as a kind of an online or in-person training? If it will be face-to-face, -face, it will be great. But if it's not possible, we can we can do it online. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Great. You're welcome. Thanks. I see we've got another hand up from Musa. Musa, go ahead. Thank you, Vanessa. Uh, my side, uh, of course, this session is interesting, uh, but I would, I would like to ask for, uh, for help. Uh, we have one of the metal rice sites in Tanzania, it's called Mbozi. Uh, and of course, we are looking for something like to build the astro tourism center. And uh, of course, we don't have experience on this. and if we get anyone who have experience with this astronomical site, maybe to build something for astrotourism, you are more than welcome. We can share ideas on this. So this uh, metal site uh, center is under Gorongoro Conservation Tanzania. So they want to build something with astrotourism. So we invite ideas and collaboration from, from your network. Thank you. Okay, thanks uh, very much, Musa. I think we can definitely uh, put you in touch with uh, a whole range of, of colleagues who have different kinds of experiences in astrotourism. And uh, I'm sure you also have some experiences that they will benefit from. Will that work? Yes, thank you, thank you. Ah, Bonaventure, uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Vanessa, thank you very much uh, for acknowledging my hand that I've raised up. Well, um, if we're talking about Vision 2024, the document has, is so rich. Um, the idea is to see how we can achieve this vision and beyond. And from my understanding, this is uh, a working document that goes beyond 2024. But looking at 2024 approaching, uh, looking at next year, uh, and you know, we have to think about the best approach now is how do we bring African astronomers 
to attend this program. What program actually do you have next year? Now, AFAS is playing a very major role and I appreciate the effort they are making and the OAD too. Now, what should be is, look at the programs we have applied for next year, how do we get them actualized? Uh, I know that so many summer schools, both in South Africa and uh, within the African uh, continent, I'm thinking, which of these programs can we hold close to 2024 that will enable African uh, uh, students to participate in 2024? We have to look at how we can achieve this. Because I believe if we encourage many of our African students to be there, it will be like a motivation to almost all of them that to be there. So what I do, can we hold close that period or within that period that probably at the end of that program, they will be attending the IAU 2024 or before then depends on what the different committees may look at. Uh, uh, let's take a look at the science committee. What interesting activity. I know we have a lot of collaborations with other regions, Europe in particular. We have Papsin, we have Fast for Future, we have uh, Erasmus Mundi that are encouraging our students uh, mobility grant that are helping out. Now, what activity, how can we use this uh, collaborations again to see how we can make sure that a good number of African uh, astronomers and scientists are there in 2024? So we shall be looking at what programs we are going to plan toward that period within next year or even within the 2024 period to ensure that our activities are remaining very, very active. Another one again is I realize that many national astronomy societies are moribund. They are not very active. Few are participating in our activities. Now, what shall we at the individual level and our country national level to encourage these national associations to be alive to 2024? I've been saying even at our own other meetings we have, we really need to bring up things that will help us create more awareness, energize them, keep them focused so that everybody from now will actually be singing GA 2024. Then everybody will be alive to it and keep on working towards that period. So we should be focusing on activities we should do next year and it's 2024 that will encourage our astronomers to attend. My fear and worry now is that we have mirroring coming up, we have our first coming up next year funding. How can people attend this program next year be able and also be able to attend 2024 program? So the funding that's going to be a very big issue here. How can I, many people feel if I'm able to attend Miriam, I may not be able to attend 2024. If I don't have fast, I may not be able to attend. So we shall look at all these programs lined up and see the one that we can get enough funding that will enable us to attend this, uh, this program in 2024, which is very, very important for Africa and the African astronomers. These are just the things I want to point out. Yeah, thanks very much. Those are good points, uh, Bonaventure. Maybe just to respond to the second point, I mean, we have got some funding to help make it easier for um, African astronomers to attend. Um, and I think what would help is to, to have an idea of kind of the number of, of staff and students from, from different countries that would like to attend. But that's a very difficult uh, estimate until the scientific program is open, right? Because I think, you know, most people are driven to attend the General Assembly uh, once that scientific program is open. But I think that can be an action point for the NOC to, to explore the number of people um, who'd like to attend as soon as uh, the scientific program is announced, uh, which should be um, sort of in April next year, I think. What do you think? Yeah, that's okay. Uh, but there was something James mentioned earlier. I think we had to be up on them because getting South African visa had become rocket science for us now. Uh, whatever we need to do to enable people to get the visa early enough to attend these programs should be put into consideration. It's very important. Yeah. Okay, and that will also help us to define the timeline. Great. Thank you. Any further comments?
No. I think in that case, I'm going to give it hand over to my esteemed co-chair um, to close the meeting. Um, thank you, Vanessa. I feel very esteemed. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Now we've reached, I think, everybody's favorite part of virtual meetings, which is time for everyone to switch their cameras on. And then we can have a group picture of everyone that was here today um, so that we remember this uh, this day that we came together and we discussed how we could make GA 2024 great, not just for, for ourselves as astronomers, but also for our continent uh, at large. So um, I don't know, you can say your favorite word, you can say cheese. That way it's Busan this year said you'll say kimchi. Bad. <laughs> but it's <was> very bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the I'm sure the, 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 the picture is going to look very good. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Are we done? Just are we free now? <clears throat> it's like a wedding. Yeah, <laughs> I want you to sign <laughs> <up>. <laughs> All right, I think we are we are done now. Um, Great. Thank so, you for that. Yep. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. All right. So, as I said, we've got a unique opportunity here. Um, can someone sing something? And just mute yourself if you are unmuted. Thanks. Thank you. Right. We've got a unique opportunity. Um, this is a time for us to sort of leave a lasting, a lasting legacy um, for generations to come, to say that these were the people that were here when the, when the first General Assembly of the IAU came to Africa, right? Um, and I think we don't want generations to say, what did, what did, what did they do, right? We want our work to speak for itself. And I think that the contributions that were made here today and contributions that we're going to make towards 2024 are surely going to make us a generation to remember in terms of astronomy for Africa. Um, so we definitely can do more, right? Um, and we really like everyone to keep those ideas coming. Um, if ever, ever something comes to mind that, you know, can really contribute to this vision that we have for 2024, we'd really like you to get in touch with us. And, 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 and talk to us. We are really willing and open to listening to your ideas. Um, so, so far we've, we've had this nice vision document. Uh, we've had the call uh, that we had earlier this year that Vanessa mentioned and we, when we got some of the updates from it. Um, we've also reached out to stakeholders to sort of communicate to them and say, well, how can you contribute to this? This is what the community thinks you can do. And it's been really great that people and, and, and these organizations have come back to us. And some of them, for example, like Space in Africa is working with APHIS to, 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 to sort of address the, 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 the point of, of this database for astronomy in Africa that is very needed and it's very necessary. Um, and today I think was, was a great day for us to, 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 to take stock and, and, and reflect. And now I think that we've got uh, a good a good idea of where we are going and 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 sort of what is to come next. Um, so what's going to come next now is that we're going to send out this call, so that if you feel like you can put your hand up and 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 contribute uh, towards the discussions here today, contribute towards the science goals, contribute towards the outreach and education goals that you can nominate yourself or nominate someone that you know would be uh, really uh, a good contributor. To, 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 to the goals that we want to achieve. We'll continue to work with our existing partners, the various IAU offices, um, the, the, the national facilities 
um, across the, the continent. So if if you if you want to put us in touch, if you want to put us in touch with 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 anyone, you you can go ahead and send us those contacts. We are willing to talk to 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 to, to people and and then bring on board all the relevant stakeholders to to help us achieve our goals. Um, so lastly, I'll just like to thank each and every one of you for taking out your time. I know some of you are very busy. Some of you all set out through with, with us since 9 a.m. this morning and, and just like you to just give yourself a round for 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 for, 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 for actually sitting through this with us and 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 and, 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 and contributing. So thank you to each one of you. Also like to thank Vanessa, uh, who's the co-chair of the who's, who's my co-chair or esteemed co-chair. Uh, in, 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 in the NOC. I'd also like to thank Kevin, who has who's been a really great advisor for us uh, for this uh, Astronomy in Africa Forum, and, and, and also is really a great advisor to the National Organizing Committee of, 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 the, of, the, of the GA 2024. I'd like to thank all the members of, of the NOC, and I'd like to thank particularly the chairs of, the, of, of those committees that came here today and, 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 and gave us an update on, on on all the activities, I'd like to thank all the speakers uh, that 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 took 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 time to record videos or actually uh, be be here and 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 sit with us throughout the day. Um, yeah, and and just thank you to 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 each one of you. You you've really been instrumental in making this um, a success and. Yeah, each one of you is important to 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 to, to, to us. And yeah, I just like to close here now. And thank you. Uh, thank you, Charles. Another time. All right. Thanks. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Charles. Thank, thank, thank you, Vanessa. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Are you alive? Bye-bye. Thank you, Charles. Bye. 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 Bye.